Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we are doing the uh, cleanup of my follow list. These are the games that are in between just a regular game that I'm not really interested in covering or playing, or I haven't seen, more than likely, on Steam, and games that are actually on my wish list, which means they are on the list of games that I actually would like to own and would like to cover. I ask people to support my channel by friending me on Steam and gifting me games off my wishlist, so it's important that it stays regular, regularly curated so that, you know, somebody doesn't gift me a game that is so incredibly awful that I refuse to cover it and then there's negative feelings all around because of that. Today we'll be looking at games that are on my, my follow list for what is the spring cleaning for me but this footage won't come out till probably December so it I am doing a little bit of catch-up I imagine next year 2020 uh, there will simply be a wish list cleanup that happens in December of 2020 and that will be it and then 2021 there probably will be another follow list cleanup although what happens is the follow list has a tendency to grow a lot more than the wish list does because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday I'm looking at every single new game that comes out on Steam or nearly every single game and talking about them, considering them to see if they might be worthy of of being covered. Uh, all while I'm doing that I'm also playing Hearthstone if that interests anybody. We'll be looking at several factors that we'll go over over the course of it. Uh, the main factors, however, are we're looking for games that either have over 20 recorded reviews, uh, which means that they actually bought the game through Steam and didn't receive a free key or buy it through a third-party storefront, and that the reviews are positive or very positive or mostly positive where if it's reviewed over 20 and it's mixed and, or negative, then it's not going to make it to the wish list. If it is under 20, but the game has come out before January 1st, 2019, well, as of this recording, like I said, I'm doing this during the beginning of spring, so it's been six months. If this game hasn't gotten enough people to review it, even to have 20 reviews, then it very much feels like the game has fallen out of any chance of having any relevancy uh, meaning that even if it was a great game it kind of doesn't matter because nobody's ever going to see it nobody's ever going to play it and let's face it my youtube channel is not uh, PewDiePie's or anything big like that so me playing a game isn't going to find a hidden gem and bring it to light of thousands upon thousands of players or even hundreds upon hundreds of players so we're looking at this game De damsel and we can skip over a lot of this usually but this is a frantic paced gameplay where you jump around vanquishing vampires rescuing hostages disarming bombs hacking servers and more it's mostly positive. It's from a developer it's called Screwtap Studios, or Screwtape Studios. I've never heard of that. Uh, this doesn't look terrible for a game. It doesn't inherently look amazingly great either, though. And, and that's a phrase I say quite a lot. It, it is kind of a middle of the road jumping platforming. It looks like it's heavily inspired from the game Mark of the Ninja. Mark of the Ninja didn't really have comic book cutscenes, but I would actually suggest that a lot of small-time game developers go with comic book cutscenes instead of trying to animate things or feeling bad because your game doesn't have any animated cutscenes. Uh, a lot of times I'll see a lot of bad video games that have great cutscenes, that have been animated and then the gameplay stinks uh, so I'm not a huge fan on fast-paced games because I have a bit of arthritis in my fingers and this does feel like a game where you are playing super fast-paced that doesn't mean I can't play them it just means it might hurt a little bit 
I might have to suffer for the art. Uh, this seems kind of repetitive, and it seems like it might be a random generated levels. Just so I'm not sure if there's really a story here. Uh, it's nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents, which is asking a little bit. It was last updated in January of 2019. The language su supports don't say anything of real interest other than it doesn't have full audio. The fact that it was reviewed by Destructoid Tech Raptor well played doesn't really mean much to me. Uh, so the comic book has to kind of tell uh, mode has to mean there is a bit of story there but let's see gameplay using damsel's powerful ultraviolet re shotgun quick reflexes devastating melee lightning fast things this is not the way to review for me to look at a game though reading how the game creator describes their game is going to be a waste of time damsel is a ballet and you're the choreographer choreographer for which means I probably would play it very awkwardly uh, my spotlight of Super Meat Boy probably is a great example of just awkward gameplay and once the controller is in my hands uh, let's see what the reviews say for the most part I don't care about positive reviews but the only negative review in this instance is not in English and I think I've, because I have so many Chrome tabs open, I don't think it's going to review load any of the reviews. So I've dropped the ball on that, too. I should have read the positive reviews before I tried to load the negative review. What's funny is so much of my RAM, like 87% of 16 gigabytes, is being uh, used up or was used up to open so many of these Chrome tabs that sometimes things load, sometimes things don't, sometimes things uh, unload, sometimes things reload. Here's where I think this falls down, though. This is 65 of a Metacritic score. Uh, and I feel... But then it's E10+, plus, which would mean it would be slightly easy for kids, wouldn't it? And a bundle with the sun soundtrack doesn't really mean anything. I think I can be generous, and, and this really isn't the time to be generous, but I think what I would do is I'm going to put this on the wish list, knowing that at $19.99 I'd never buy this. This would have to be below $10 before I'd even consider it. Um, and almost certainly it will never get to that point anyways. Uh, the only other thing I think I can do right now would be to put this game... Uh, just leave it on the fall list and give it another six months and I bet in another six months nothing would happen um, so yeah I guess I'll just put this on the wish list this was a awkward game to start on but in all fairness there was a Nether D game called Damon 9 that was would have been even more awkward to start on being a full motion video horror game um, speaking of awkward games it's, i do have implemented right now a blur mode where i can come over here and blur a screen if we run into an adult or lewd game which will have some of those on the follow list um, and in all fairness they probably been faring a little bit better than the other games on the fall list because a lot of games are leaving the fall list and that is that is believable and understandable like if they were close to being ignored in the first place being uh, after six months if they haven't done anything more that uh, that makes sense so our next game is called Dandy and Randy, and it's a very simplistic sounding name. It is still in early access, so I can ignore it immediately because of that. If you've been in early access for six months, 
you're never gonna finish your game it hasn't been updated since February it's eight dollars and ninety nine cents which is a little too expensive for what this looks like uh, this kind of looks like a top-down uh, Zelda Game Boy game but I don't think it really is that I, I think it is more of a puzzle game where you're just walking from one point to the other point and and there's probably not a lot of collectibles and pickups or a really complicated level design uh, they're saying it's a 2d top-down old-school arcade game I don't know what would actually classify this as an arcade game in my mind something is an arcade game when it has very limited numbers of screens like Donkey Kong is an arcade game because it only has three or four different level screens that you can see or Pac-Man is an arcade game because it only has really maybe 30 screens that you can see before it starts cycling over again um, this in comparison probably has hundreds of screens that you scroll over through so no no reason to really need to uh, beat around the bush this game fails to have relevancy because there's no uh, no good uh, reviews not enough reviews here we have two reviews that are either early access reviews people are saying this is goof troop 2.0 I never played goof troop on super NES so I can't really testify to that but even if this is a clone of goof troop clearly there's no audience there and clearly it's an unfinished game so this game is going to be removed from the fall list like so many more next we have a game called dare Sora tears for an unknown sky this is a visual novel there's visual novels galore in the fall list more than I probably should have ever put uh, that being said we can see this is a 56% reviewed uh, positively out of 12 reviews that of people who actually purchased the game it's tagged anime horror 2d I am not a hundred percent sure that this is actually a Japanese visual game it looks like it's got a level of animation that does tend to point towards Japanese but I wouldn't be surprised if this is Chinese or Korean actually and, it, and the only way I can even guess at that is by the language here you have a red flag for a visual novel being two dollars and ninety nine cents that is way too cheap for visual novels because visual novels tend to be extremely extremely expensive it is Japanese full audio so it actually is a Japanese game as far as I can tell uh, that being said the name is not recognizable it doesn't strike me as something that uh, is related to any anime or anything uh, here you have 5 out of 10 there's potential here nothing more nothing less uh, do I recommend the game no uh, game crashes when you open for around 20 seconds and then the exe literally self destructs itself after closing 10 out of 10 would play again uh, here's something steam has started doing too is they will recommend you more games from the developer and and the publisher at, instead of just more games in general that might be better uh, so here's a free very popular game called Doki Doki Literature Club which spoiler alert, has a big twist to it and is not just your standard visual uh, novel uh, whereas several of these other games are very recognizable names and I also recognize this as as being one that I've considered and so Soul Press has put out some games that I've considered but I'm not sure a lot uh, for instance this game Sakura Sakura makes no sense because that's Cherry Blossom Cherry Blossom uh, translating directly to English so uh, and you'll see a lot of games with Sakura in the name as if that is an indication of quality when it really isn't an indication of anything uh, yep, 
there's no nothing here. This is not one of the few top tier visual novels that needs to stay on Steam. Next we have Dark Devotion. This is a game that came out April 26th, 2019. So this has been far less than, uh, than six months. But it has passed the relevancy test. I put this on the follow list when the game first came out and was first talked about. Probably even a little bit before then because I know uh, one of the new sites I follow was talking about it. It is tagged as a Souls-like, so it's kind of like a Dark Souls 2-bit game, uh, 8-bit 2D style game. It's $19.99. Uh, of course, they're putting out hot fixes and trying to fix it now. It's full audio in English, which is kind of nice. Uh, that doesn't really tell you how much lines of dialogue. It might have the character only say a few lines throughout the entire game. But all I needed to see, and really all I need to see on any game on the fall list, is if it is has either some appeal to me, which Dark Devotion, uh, I'm perfectly fine to play a dark game. I am honestly a little afraid of Souls-like games. I have played one of the Dark Souls games and didn't get very far in it. I found it tedious and grindy. Uh, and frankly, I will fully admit, I'm not the best player out there, so I have not gotten good as the meme goes. Uh, so that's a little scary, but this is also f a fine game that, particularly if I can get 50% off, generally I want to buy every game at least 50% 50 off, 50 off during a Steam summer sale or some other big sale that Steam is doing. It's mostly the summer sales that are the best ones, uh, and even then they're not that good anymore. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting this for $10 and playing it and then, and then just spotlighting it for... 30 minutes or a few hours I wouldn't be super surprised if I played this game and rage quitted after a few hours uh, although maybe maybe not maybe this is a short enough game and a little bit easier game where you can uh, actually as an average player get to the end and that would be fine this isn't the first 2d and sort of dark games inspired by Dark Souls. Also, there's things like Salt and Sanctuary from a few years ago that also have come out, and they probably still are sitting on my wish list as it's not the category of games that I'm usually looking for. Let's see, next we have a game here called Dark Quest 2, a turn based RPG where you control a party of heroes. Uh, it has Though it seems to be a positioning isometric appearance to it. And I will say on first look, this looks kind of like Heroes of Might and Magic. And then I have to think to myself, there's also several JRPGs that are tactical placement games that are better known. So I don't know how I could justify playing this game over something that was better known. Um, I believe it's maybe Danganronpa is the game I'm thinking about. Uh, so uh, that's a tactical placement and I know that there are several others. Dragon Quest looks a lot like Heroes Qu Hero Quest on that picture. Uh, so the inspirations are certainly being made pretty obvious. This is 82% positive, though, so should I eliminate something just because there are other games? Uh, apparently in February it came out for, uh, for the Xbox One. That stopped meaning anything, though. Like, games that are small indie games on Steam have been able to come out on the Xbox and the Nintendo Switch very easily these days. Uh, so it's no longer a mark of quality. And to be all fair... Xbox Arcade really quickly started letting rather bad games on on their storefronts. They they had a couple of them, and one of them in particular. Um, yeah, here you have 
it is inspired uh, by by Darkest Dungeon, Dungeon Saga, Hero Quest, Talisman, and War Warhammer Quest. And that's just some search engine optimization by na naming those games. Um, and I bet the recommended games here are not anything that I would use. Let's see if we can get the negative ones to load. Wanted to love this game, huge fan of Hero Quest. The thing is, uh, I played Hero Quest personally myself once. I'm not even sure I finished a full game. It was an incredibly, incredibly slow game. It was an interesting, cool idea and cool experience, but it's not uh, not great. There was a mobile game that took a lot of the missions out of the adventure guide, the storybook that came with Hero Quest, and just made mobile games out of it. And, and that was pretty fun. I played that for a while. It's like playing Hero Quest, but not very exciting. I've been playing MP for... Uh, I don't know what MP stands for. Uh, let's see. I've been playing MP, but if you plan to play four players, forget it. Multiplayer, I guess is what they mean. Yeah. So, here's my experience. I don't ever play online with anybody. So I would just be playing this single player. That is a consideration definitely to consider. Uh, rating for single player, thumbs up. Rating for co-op, thumbs down. Game is okay, I guess. First levels are more fun, but the last few where you have to gather parts of the amulet are really tough and generally is expected that the only one correct party set up. Uh, there is only one correct party set up. Hmm... This is probably an instance where if you want to play Darkest Dungeon, which is a video game, play Darkest Dungeon. If you want to play Dun Dungeon Saga, which I suspect is also a video game, play that. But if you want to play the board games of Hero Quest, Talisman, or Warhammer Quest, you probably should just play those board games and have a much different experience. Although. Maybe that's not the type of people you want to be hanging out with either. That That's going to be a very personal decision that I suppose you have to make. Uh, some old board game people can be really fun and great, but you do run into the dangers of a well-actually nerd that is all about gatekeeping and has literally no social skills whatsoever. Um, as someone who probably would be categorized as somebody like that at times in their life I now can look back and say that's not particularly fun uh, so the graphics have something to be desired certainly here too I just don't think actually this looks very much like the mo the mobile game I played I wonder if it's the same developer um, yeah, I just don't think that this would be an entertaining game to cover. So I'll leave Dark Quest alone. It seems like you can also buy Dark Quest 1. And if I click on Dark Quest 1, you can see that it's mixed reviewed. So people really didn't like this. And this really does look like it's just a Hero Quest uh, game. So I wonder if this developer, Brain Seal Entertainment, has made anything else since March of 2018. No. And there's something else to say about these art assets too. Is you could very, very easily go to the Unity or Unreal store and buy better looking art assets and make an asset flip game uh, to do this exact same thing and make it look better. So it's showing its age in less than a year. Hmm. So yeah, this game has to leave the fall list. It's just got too many problems. It would be extremely problematic to try and cover this game. This is a game that would take hours and hours to do one playthrough. I'd be playing single player in an extremely long game. 
And I think if you compared this to something like Diablo, where Diablo 1 in particular is basically the same as playing this game, except for the fact that they've sped it up so that you're clicking the mouse and hacking and slashing and being very in interactive with it. You're healing with uh, keys and turning it into uh, a predecessor to an MMO where this feels like this is still the extremely slow pace that you would play this game, this style of game, uh, if you were playing it with uh, pen and paper in the uh, tabletop version. So yeah, just fails to embrace the future and it's more of a nostalgia style game. Next we have Dark Train. This came out in October of 2016, and it is rated 82% positive of 57 reviews, which is really all I needed to see. So, I wonder what my hesitation with this game was before, uh, previously. Uh, it seems unlikely that I added this to the follow list, and it had no reviews or less than 20 reviews maybe maybe not but that doesn't make a lot of sense games from 2016 don't all of a sudden get a lot more sales and a lot more reviews there's nothing in this video that scares me away from this game the only thing is this game this video doesn't seem like it's really showing much as far as is there a character you're playing as or are you just directly controlling a train um, Assume the role of a mechanical squid in 2.35F that is tied to the railroad machine and deliver mysterious orders. Hmm. It seems like the art is kind of a paper cutout art style, which is something you definitely don't see a lot of in video games. $9.99 really isn't a price to be concerned about. Uh, particularly when it's on sale. It says it has full English audio, and that really wouldn't be anything I would be concerned about. 77 on Metacritic is about the average for every game that's good or not. It says no point and click, okay. No hints, no help. That's not really something that would sell me on a game. Uh, it feels like it might be pretty short. Uh, let's see what the negative reviews say, if they will load up. Well, we get lucky enough for that. Um, looks like no, they won't. And we could sit here forever and it, it won't happen. There's a lot of black and white games, like My Memory of Us, that I considered. And then they looked very interesting, but didn't have enough uh, reviews in the positive. Is Bioshock Remastered, the remastered version, not received very well, so it's mixed reviews, whereas most of these other things are reviewed pretty well. Deponia as a point and click, and then Deponia the Complete Journey, which I don't believe is the complete journey anymore, because they added more, so it's just false advertising. You can buy Deponia two or three different times and not get the full game. Oh, it did late load uh sadly it's just a first fest what does that mean and looks intentionally so at least to some degree i doubt the developers wanted to have bad controls but that's what they created besides other poorly thought out things looks like some people enjoy the game though so maybe give it a try if you feel so, so but feel it's expected let's see the visuals look really nice and the scenes in Steam also, but I didn't get past for the first few scenes. I don't get it what to do and it's really frustrating. The game mechanics and curls are really poor. I got it in a bundle so I didn't waste much money on it. Um, design is undoubtedly impressive, however it's not clear what to do. Uh, too, too long didn't read. The much advertised visuals are nice, but there's a little logic to the game, and the controls are actively fighting against you. I strongly advise you not to buy it. Uh, let's see. 
pixel hunting. I don't like that. So, I think there's two narratives I have to pick here. I have to either pick overall that it's a good game and ignore these negative reviews. Or I have to buy into the narrative that there's poor controls and pixel hunting and the art is good. But that, that's pretty much it. And the game in general is just confusing. Uh, so it might be crazy point and click moon logic in which they're implementing it. And a lot of that is believable, certainly. Uh, when you have some mixed media type game, uh, often the game part is forgotten about. So this might have been an artist who was really good at doing paper cutout animation and could scan that into a game and, and then put some gameplay mechanics around that, but doesn't generally understand gameplay mechanics or level design or sto possibly even storytelling um, so i don't know it's it's kind of when you include the games that people who got the game via um, key it's kind of closer to mixed reviews it's only very positive for people who purchased the game so was there possibly some update? Um, hmm, this was updated December 27th, 2018. Hmm. It says no point and click, but that's not accurate if you're pixel hunting. Hmm. See, you're playing as a squid connected to a train, and that in itself is a weird sentence. So I don't know where the squid is half the time on, on in this video, and I don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Hmm... I would say, here's an example of solving a puzzle, I guess, as you're flying around pushing things. This is, uh, and here the squid's playing the harp, Th this is probably a frustrating game. Now it's playing basketball, uh, making scores. Now it's lighting candles on a Christmas tree after setting itself on fire. Now it's cutting an apple, so... I'm getting the idea of what the, this is supposed to be doing. Could I figure out these things playing a game? The, this is a tough one, really. It, it really comes down to how much confidence do I have in myself as figuring out moon logic and games, and how much tolerance do I have to frustrating games, which honestly, as the years go on, my tolerance to frustrating games are, is definitely going down as there are so many other games you can possibly be playing. Uh, old NES games are a great example of a lot of games that were <laughs> impossible to win at, literally, or designed to be incredibly frustrating. Arcade games designed to be frustrating to steal quarters from kids. Um, I think, though this is one that's worth looking at so i'm gonna put this on the wish list that was very much a coin flip though i could have had i been in a slightly different mood i could have almost certainly um, gone in the other direction and i imagine that is why it's on the follow list and not on the wish list in the first place so next we have darwin project which I believe is a battle royale multiplayer game, a uh, survival style game. It came out March uh, 2018. It's still in early access, so it's failed at that. It's multiplayer only, so I don't cover multiplayer only games anyways. I have no idea why this is even on the follow list. Uh, there's so many factors here. Uh, that knocks this out of contention 
being a free-to-play game I don't cover free-to-play games because they're free you can play them um, you're only selling maybe maybe your information and tracking it has in-app purchases I typically don't play free-to-play games with in-app purchases either definitely on that case this clearly seems like it is a survival asset flip game uh, with probably some battle royale elements um, I guess perhaps there was something here that caught my eye or maybe I just hit the button on accident I I don't see a single factor that would have made me consider this maybe there was a different description maybe there was different images that is definitely possible certainly that I would get uh, see a game when it first came out it would have different videos different screenshots different descriptions all that stuff can be updated and changed uh, with what I assume is only moderate oversight from Valve so a game could kind of look completely different uh, here we have a game called Darwin's Test a first-person action platformer game it's a portal clone uh, I love the portal games and certainly it inspired a lot of people to make games very similar to portal uh, of course one of the major factors of portal 1 and portal 2 that made them good games was a very well written story and the factor of why it had a very well written story is because uh, valve could afford to hire writers uh, so very often you'll see these kind of clone games and they will be not well written or not well game designed there's nothing here that on this video screams to me like it's not at least decent and we have 75 percent positive of 16 users this is also a game that kind of falls out of relevancy the only reason I would play a game like this is because I like Portal um, and let's face it there's a decent argument to play this and then play Portal 1 and Portal 2 a second time on my channel possibly even a third time uh, I think it would probably be the third time uh, that I play Portal 1 and Portal 2 this is full audio in French which is a little odd uh, but I think I could definitely handle listening to French and reading subtitles um, it would be nice if this told me how long it is and how many puzzles it has because this could be um, could be a combination of being really short 14 achievements might be less than 14 puzzles uh, it's saying it's inspired by portal the talus principle the talus principle is pretty much directly inspired by portal the Turing test was definitely directly inspired by portal and then the witness probably somewhat inspired by portal in the sense that they are both puzzle games in 3d environments but the witness really isn't anything like the portal series is or Turing test or the talus principle the witness is a, a very much its own thing uh, There's no English audio and the subtitles flash by a bit too fast occasionally, which wouldn't be a major issue if it wasn't for the translation is not up to par. It's going to be more academic language, which just looks horrible when not translated con correctly. That's the exact quote from the game. The surgical repair of your brain injuries is still fresh. Um, so... Apparently this is, is a French person who tried to translate it to English. I'm not too much of a snob though to not try a game that is poorly translated. So I can't really reject a game just because it's made by a French person. Um, and I have a extremely minimal grasp of the French language but I think I could probably get the general idea. So it's not a scenario where I think you would uh, be confused as to what the game wanted you to do. Um, and there's quite a few good French companies out there uh, that make games. So you can't claim that all of France is full of 
bad or lazy game developers or anything like that so I don't think th that's enough to de-justify it so I want to put this on the wish list although it is getting special uh, dispensation certainly because it's a portal clone if I saw another game that was 75% uh, positive and only had 16 reviews I might swing in the other direction uh, but I love puzzle games I love slower paced games if I'm not having to run and gun and shoot in a game that's great because there are so many games where you do have to run and gun and shoot next we have Dawn of Man which I suspect there's been a couple of clones of this game already released. Uh, this came out on March 1st of 2019, so it's not been out very long as of this recording at all. It is 79% positive overall, and in the last three days it's 75% positive. It's a city builder, and I tried to play City Skylines, and, and the text was too small for me to read, so uh, I'm not... 100% sure I want to try and play another city builder game. It's a real-time strategy game. This would be, I guess, a modern attempt at making a game like Warcraft 1 or Red Alert Command and Conquer, things that I played when I was a kid and have nostalgia for, uh, except for this is just humans in the beginning of their civilizations. So this would be kind of an awkward game to try and cover it would take an incredibly long amount of time uh, it also probably falls under the category of having to be compared to age of empires and i wouldn't be surprised if the most recent steam game called age of empires or most recent version of age of empires on steam isn't that good but what age of empires would do is start you at the beginning of civilization and then work its way up to an iron age pretty fast and then a, and then a um, silver age and, and just keep moving up to a bronze age and uh, I'm probably getting all the ages out of order but it wouldn't keep you at that level of technology that long and there certainly are games where you're going through thousands upon thousands of years of evolution in societies where Dawn of Man seems to be, just by its own namesake, forced to stick mostly to the Stone Age and the Silver Age, or Iron Age. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to go to the point where people will have technology or lasers or a futuristic la age that has yet to, to happen. Um, so I think this is a pretty good game. I'm not saying that, but I don't think this is probably a game for me. It's also extremely expensive at $25. It's, um, let's see if supports French, German, and Spanish. Let's see. It's still getting updates, which is good. It's got a Metacritic of 74. Um, it's from the creators of Planet Base, a game I've never heard of. Yeah. I've tried liking the game, I honestly have. The concept is interesting, however, the game seems hell-bent on doing anything it can to annoy me. Every game so far I have started goes really well, then until I decide to expand. This is where the game really shines in finding new and interesting ways to make my people do everything in the most inefficient manner possible. Uh, it's really fun to play for a while. Uh, the last objective of most scenarios is to reach a population of 150 which means playing hours after hours with a population between 130 and 150 minus n where n is greater or equal to 1. Um, after you reach a population of 140, the game slows down birth rate and migration rate dramatically. So it just stretches the game out for no reason. I think these micromanagey style games too are something that I don't really care to play very often. Um, 
I would like to have very much an abbreviated experience, and that's why if I was going to play a real-time str strategy game where it's a city builder, I probably would want to do something like StarCraft or WarCraft. Something where the the goal, the thing that makes that needs to happen for you to win is relatively short, relatively easy to do, and then you just move to another mission. So I think Dawn of Man, while it might be a good game for a lot of people, is not one I want to cover. Next we have Dawn of the Celestial Pod. So this is a flying around game where you're whipping yourself around with tentacles as a space squid, which is a slightly interesting concept that I think is controlled by a mouse. If you see this circle here, uh, and it seems like you get other abilities later. Uh, the thing here, I would suspect more than anything, is that this probably controls really, really badly. Uh, this is like the game Quop or um, the Octodad, which is a game I own and haven't gotten around to playing, uh, that are built around the concept of controlling a awkward character that you and that's kind of the opposite of most games like it, when you brain boil down most games you're you are just pressing the a button or the b button to do what is a usually extremely complicated set of actions like jumping or when you press a is it's a lot more complicated than just pushing the button a it, if i had to program and press the A button to bend my knees as the character and then maintain my balance by pressing the B button and then jump by exerting extra force uh, in an upright position by pressing the X button and then I had to maintain my balance again by pressing the B button and then direct myself by pressing the Y button or the left stick. Uh, that's not a fun game. Uh, what I just described and that's kind of what this is, is is the entirety of the entertainment probably is built around controlling this uh, one thing let's see it seems like there's only one boss seems like there's only 10 enemies in the entire game so it's really short there are two recommended reviews uh, which I don't really trust. Recommended reviews. So, even if this is a good game, it falls out of relevancy. Only two people actually bought the game and reviewed it after six months or more. Yep, this is another game that should just leave the fall list. It might be a hidden gem, certainly, but it, it doesn't matter if it is, if it is. Next we have a game that's a bunch of Asian characters translated to Dawn of the Lost Castle. I suspect this might be a Chinese game, but it's rated 87% positive and 86% overall positive. Uh, recently Steam has given kind of the open door to positive review bombs. Like They, they really stepped in it philosophically. When they said they were going to start ignoring in their reviews over here review bombs unless you log into your account and opt to see the review bombs that are usually negative and they called them off-topic review bombs but since that has happened there's been an instance where there has been effectively in the exact same uh, definition of being off topic that I would describe it as there's been a positive review bomb of uh, one of the Assassin's Creed games and they said well we're not sure what we're going to do about it so we're going to just leave it alone this opens the door terribly because the main reason why they said they were going to start ignoring review bombs is because there was a Taiwanese game that had a artist in there that snuck in a insult in some of the background art against the Chinese uh, president. Uh, so then the Chinese government or the Chinese people trying to be white knights for the Chinese president to get good uh, social credit score, which is an actual thing, 
they were implementing started review bombing that Taiwanese game negatively. Uh, Steam did not want to be uh, Valve and Steam did, understandably so did not want to open up that possibility to say countries now can just put fake reviews on our site and drastically change the scores of games. It makes sense. And this is really an off topic thing, but it's going to come into relevancy pretty soon. Uh, now that that has happened and they said that they will remove off topic review bombs and they've said they won't remove off topic review positive bombs. They'll only remove the negative ones. Well, that opens the door to a lot of Russian and Chinese game devs than potentially getting their games positively reviewed. So, now all Russian made games or games that look like they're made in Russia and all Chinese made games potentially are in question, their scores are in question. So the entire review system is less believable. It's lost its credibility uh, just because you made a decision and these are the burdens of being in charge of a of the world's biggest PC gaming site, but uh, they really should have not ever done anything. They should have said, we're not going to do anything for negative review bombs. People can investigate if they want to investigate. It, we're not going to be the arbitrator of what is off topic and what isn't. Because very often review bombs that were negative up until this point were not really off topic in my opinion if you're complaining that a game is running poorly and you mention that it has de nouveau in it uh that was often being given as an ex uh, as an off-topic negative review that's not really it uh even if they're you're complaining because the developer of the game said something mean on twitter and they're a jerk if you're aware of that fact and that affects how you feel about the game that's something that's not really off topic it there are people out there that don't want to give their money to companies or game developers if they hold a stance publicly loudly and obnoxiously uh, that you completely disagree with uh, so when the topic is all of reality which is how one sometimes has to look at the world and usually should work, look at the world uh, developers statements developers opinions uh, what DRM they add extra to the steam DRM are all on topic to how some people will experience a game uh, of course I will say to most people you should try to separate the art from the artist and still try to play the game but that's really not for steam to say okay so long rant there for no reason um i definitely am off topic myself we're supposed to be looking at dawn of the last castle it's an adventure puzzle where you try to solve the mysteries of the castle to understand the story of the castle it seems to be 86 percent positive uh came out may 17th 2017 this looks like it's not particularly long as an adventure game it looks like it might be a bit of a vertical slice or a demo of a game it is bundled with another game called hunger apartment uh, in the special chinese games bundle and bundled with another game that is written in chinese it is full audio, it says, in English and simplified Chinese and traditional Chinese. So, you have a review in Chinese. You have a review in Chinese. Uh, there's bug fixes that are still happening. Let's see. The English here doesn't seem to be... Like, are you ready? That might be intentional spelling, or that might just be bad spelling. Hmm. So I'm having to look at this game, particularly because it is Chinese, with some skepticism. The art does not look that amazingly good, 
and the gameplay doesn't seem like it has any story and here's the reason for that long story right now there are zero reviews whatsoever in English so as somebody who does not read simplified Chinese or traditional Chinese I guess I could go copy and paste each review and see if there's any credibility see if they're saying the same thing over and over again um, we can see that a lot of these games that will, these reviews were activated by steam keys is this just somebody cheating in China did they pay people to write reviews I can't tell I have no idea uh, you're having very minimal negative reviews you're having the negative review play for less than an hour uh, less than an hour we could look at the average play time for any of these people and it's less than three hours this person played 6.4 hours uh, most of these are less than one and a half hours so you're in this weird position and there's 91 reviews here but they're all in Chinese and they could be for any number of reasons illegitimate reviews or reviews I just don't agree with or reviews that I don't find helpful so I have to kind of make a snap judgment here and with that skepticism with knowing that the companies are out there for all around the world that will cheat and buy reviews even though this is very positive I can totally tell why this is on the follow list I see terrible Chinese games uh, on sale on Steam every week and I wouldn't even say that this is probably a terrible Chinese game or, or even a super low effort Chinese game it's just an extremely short demo of a game for that reason this is leaving the fall list and that was a really long story and kind of a sad story about the state of Valve is that you can't trust reviews when they're in different languages and a lot of games will manipulate their reviews this way even if it is an English only language game you might see a lot of games having lots of Russian reviews lots of a Asian of some country of origin reviews whether it's Korean reviews Chinese reviews Japanese reviews and if you can't read that language this can be very very deceptive but what I'm seeing here tells me a different story and there is definitely a disconnection between how many people have played this game so far uh, which it that is a ton of people to pay play and review this game most of the games we're looking at barely have three or four reviews and for it to be so positive and it probably would be a hundred percent if they didn't if they weren't trying to get around uh, any detection I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was higher moving on here's a game called DDS do-it-yourself drone simulator I liked this concept and I've kept this on the follow list way too long the idea of building your own drone in a game um, is an interesting idea and then flying it around in 3d is an interesting idea to be fair it's probably a mini game that should be inside of something like Watch Dogs 3 like I, it would be surprising if there isn't a section in Watch Dogs 3 and possibly even Watch Dogs 1 and 2 where you're flying around the drone. And having a racing game where you're behind the camera of a drone flying through rings is an interesting idea. The problem is it just doesn't have any relevancy. There's only three people that reviewed it. Again, not in my language even. Uh... German 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 all negative I suspect this game barely launches and barely runs it is somewhat coordinated here but it is also almost certainly an asset flip game uh, in a lot of ways if all the art and assets here where you're building your drone and putting it together which I don't 
think many people would really build or assemble a drone nowadays. They'd probably just buy one. Uh, the buildings, the backgrounds, the walls, the the rings and things are all almost certainly pre-bought assets. Which wouldn't be a terrible thing. Certainly, and flying around in a park or in an arena is not a terrible idea either. Um, although, I think in the United States, flying around parks that are public parks are is usually banned, and flying around in arenas is usually banned. So there's there's a lot of rules and regulations that have been added to to flying a drone in the first place. Uh, so a digital version of this or a VR version of this would be great. Unfortunately, this game is not the one to happen. Um, and honestly, I think my interest in flying a drone would probably immediately evaporate if somebody actually handed me the controls of a drone and I played with it for an hour. Uh, I'd be like, okay, this is pretty fun. I've done it. I, I've lived with it once and I don't need to ever do it again. And a digital version of that is probably the exact same experience. Next we have Divine Card Battles. I'm always looking for a card based game because I like card based games and because I play Hearthstone so if there could be something that was popular enough to replace Hearthstone that would be interesting although it probably would not be a small time uh, Steam developer to come out with something. The art on this game doesn't look terrible uh, but the background and the table light layout looks pretty lackluster. The, the thing is very few companies would be able to afford to do the level of art that uh, Activision Blizzard can do. So Hearthstone will always look relatively top-notch and it's 68% positive of 16 users. It's single player only, so there is no multiplayer, so as a card game, it kind of falls apart there. I don't mind playing a single player uh, card game. Of course, why not play Slay the Spire, which is well n much better known. I don't know this Phantom Rose game. Might want to check that one out. Um, Shadow Hand is a decent game from what I hear to play. So, yeah, there's definitely some other games that could be considered. Uh, admittedly, the game does have a seed of interesting card battle system, but currently it lacks a lot of stuff needed to make the game fun outside of the speculative potential of an actual concept in play. The UI is weird and doesn't use standard design. There's no real tutorial, no skip function, etc. Hmm. So, yeah, we've got some negatives and then we've got some positives. And I skipped positives. Meh, not much to do. That's a nice, simple negative review to have. So, yeah, Divine Card Battle. It's, it, it's leaving the fall list. Most card games are going to leave the fall list. That being said, the next game on this is an RPG Maker game called Divine World of Shadows. So it's almost as if the developer, Stapleton, was that the developer of the previous game? Yes. Made a RPG Maker game that was 76 positive of 21 reviews, which is kind of nothing. And then they said, hey, let's make a card game based on the art or seems maybe like there's even a JRPG element here. Let's see. Seems like they're selling the same thing twice here. There's a the card game again is the battling system. It's just now they've put some RPG maker levels and and the open world experience around it. So question I guess would be which came first this came out on May 4th 2018 this came out on March 15th 2019 so this game came first and then they're trying to resell the game they only want a dollar and 99 cents for it 
Uh, and two dollars and thirty eight cents for both. Uh, but there really is no reason to buy two games, uh, two games that are lackluster and really have no relevancy. This just barely has over twenty reviews. And I really have no interest in playing an RPG Maker game pretty much ever. So let's move on to the next game on the list. Uh, and this is going along, I now realize, because I took a wild tangent there to explain things. Uh, we have a game called Dead by Death, which is... I don't know if you would call that a low effort name or just a stupid name. Uh, but it would be one or the other. This looks like it's a platformer game, kind of like a Castlevania game, and in part, uh, it seems kind of inspired by that retro style of platformer, is what it says. Hmm. There's no reviews here, just eight user reviews in total. And I think I've probably accidentally gone way too far looking for Castlevania style clones that I've put things like this. It says it has 36 dungeons. I don't know what that really may means. It says it was developed by uh, one person. It says it's simplified Chinese and I suspect that's exactly where I would put this as a cheap Chinese clone. This is a flash game straight up. I don't care what anybody says, this should not be sold on Steam for money. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Unfortunately, this Castlevania wannabe falls short. The levels are, are vast labyrinths with generic Castlevania graphics populated with a mishmash of hereticide uh, enemies. I wonder what that word means, Her hereticide enemies. Uh, let's see. There's a reason this game is so cheap. Skip it. There are plenty of other stuff worth your time. And I think that probably is justifiable. Meanwhile, I recently covered Castlevania Lord of Shadows Mirror Fate, which I wouldn't say is a particularly good Castlevania style game, but it is a Castlevania game made by the makers of uh, or the publishers of Castlevania or you could play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night which I believe is soon to be out uh, by the time you're seeing this video it will be out uh, which is the spiritual successor to Cal Castlevania or you could play Death's Gambit or let's see if any of these others might be worth playing off the top of my head. No, I, I don't recognize any of these other games. Um, so yeah, this is this is asking too much and four dollars and ninety nine cents is not particularly cheap e either. Um, so yeah, Dead by Death, another game leaving the fall list. Frankly I'm a little surprised it is on the fall list. Next we have Dead Climb, which seems to be a vertigo inducing uh, physics game. So it's a casual ragdoll physics based game about climbing after death. Player is thrown into mountain climbing limbo and has to use his dead limbs to reach the top. A zombie staining. A zombie taining. Let's see. So, it's kind of like Mount Your Friends or Quop, a climbing game with a lot of weirdness around it, certainly. Like, this probably is an asset flip game. Yeah, I would call this an asset flip game. When you look at the interface, it is not very good. And I'm not sure why this is on the fall list again. I must have been just being really, really generous to pe people at some point, because I should have had enough enough sense in my head, I suppose, to 
to realize this is not a game that needs to be on the follow list. Uh, particularly when the horror bundle, when there's bundles, four in ones, selling four games as one. And yeah, I, I don't know what, what I was thinking that day. It, it does inspire me to, to be glad, though, that I am seeing games on the follow list and I'm able to make decisions. Because the reason why most of the games are on the follow list is because I was paralyzed with uh, an inability to make a decision. And so my standards have gone up quite a bit. And that means that next time I need to do a follow list cleanup, there should be considerably less games to consider and they will be better quality, hopefully. So our next game to consider is Dead Moon Revenge of Phobos. I guess that's Phobos. Looks like it's a VR shooting game. It doesn't look terrible, but it falls out of relevancy again because it has only seven user reviews. And even if this is a good VR game, which again, it doesn't look terrible, um, it would just stay on the fall list anyways. It's $12.99, that makes sense. It's still being updated uh, six months later, which actually speaks very well for the developer. Uh, of course, I'm covering, I'm in, actually in the middle of covering this Doom reboot right now. I took a break and there is a Doom VR version, so arguably you probably should just play Doom VR uh, Let's see, we have a not recommended, we have another not recommended, we have another uh, right, recommended. Went through the trouble of building four campaigns and that is admirable. Um, a only a little bit in, but there are glaring flaws. The weapons don't do enough damage. Projectiles that the enemies hurt her let you look dumb. What, what is scary about blue bubbles? Why is there no menu? I want to tweak my settings. Snap turn sucks. That's going to be a problem with VR games, I think, and a lot of VR games. So, yeah, there's a lot of not recommended games here. And I, I would say Doom VR is the right move. If you were going to play a game in VR where you're shooting monsters, go with something that has more polish and would make more sense. Or just play Doom and lose the VR part that would also make sense the fact that this throughout the entire trailer has unreal vive steam vr and oculus is kind of ridiculous uh, take note here this game video is also only showing you about three seconds of gameplay before it is pausing which might be an indication that at least when this game was uh this video was recorded that the game failed to render consistent frame pacing for more than three seconds or crash crashed a lot because you would in any gameplay trailer want to see the game being played for a good five or 20 seconds uh, just to make sure of that and if you're doing a lot of jump cuts if you're moving around that's slightly questionable. Like, why did it need to jump around from that jump cut? Why is it jump cutting so much? Is this hiding something about how the game actually plays? Or is this just a terrible producer and video editor? Uh, but I don't think I need to consider this anymore. Uh, it should just leave the fall list. And maybe in a year's time... As of this recording, I'll be done with VR so much that I will uh, I will choose to remove all VR games. So this next game to consider is Dead or School, and I'm gonna have to go to blurry mode for a brief second here because I know Dead or School is in a weird position. It is a fighting game, but it is also tagged. Uh, sexual content and nudity so I want to just see which screenshots will load and which won't because some of these screenshots definitely are showing levels of 
uh, outfit damage. Well, I think we might be lucky here, or unlucky, in the sense that none of the screenshots are going to load up. Um, nope, they all decided to start loading. Okay. Well, we'll roll the dice here for YouTube friendliness. So you play as this girl. She's given a magical set of schoolgirl uniforms, which, by the way, she was great, uh, raised in underground subways in a post-zombie infected Tokyo, so she has no idea what school is. She's a great fighter. It is equivalent, I suppose, to Oni Chamber series, where there's a girl with a sword fighting a bunch of zombies in a bikini. Uh, this is rated 89% positive, 91% positive over its lifetime. It's mostly just a good game with a few scenes of nudity. Uh, it's still early access since July 2018. So it's still, uh, it should be done by now, particularly when you're calling it version 6.08. But they're working on it. Full Japanese audio. 63 achievements is a lot, certainly. Uh, supports English subtitles and Chinese subtitles. Um, so here's Onichamba Z2 Chaos, which is the only Onichamba game on Steam. Uh, Hyper D Dimension Neptunia, I believe, is a Team Plus game that has a little bit of cheesecake and lewdness, but not anything more. Whereas Cinderella Escape 2 is once patched for the 18 plus content, just full of nudity. There is this whole case of games on Steam that if you play them unpatched, they might be completely devoid of any uh, cheesecake lewdness or nudity. Or uh, if you play them patched, it might be uh, quite a lot. Here's a Sinran Kagura game. There's quite a lot of Sinran Kagura games. They too tend not to be very hardcore in what they show, though. Um, and yet, PlayStation 4 seems to be making it extremely difficult for them to make their Team Plus games. Most of the Sinner and Cargo games, I think, are te Team Plus games also. Um, so, this one, I guess, is still. Uh, still baking as it's early access and I want to give it more time here somebody says they're not a fan of the story fair enough but the gameplay is fun uh, I'm just not feeling it whereas every other review is positive um, so this might be a game that I buy and I probably should just put it on the wish list at this point but it might be very much a game that I buy and can't play on Steam <laughs> Uh, well, I can't play on YouTube. Um, I can play it on Steam, certainly, uh, but I can't criticize it. And I have yet to figure out a good way to manage my time to make edited, curated videos and review a game uh, that is an adult game in nature. That's something that I think I will want to do at some point. Uh, it's just, I don't exactly know how to manage my time there without hiring an editor and having them spend their eight plus hours a day that they're working edit down what could be potentially six hours of gameplay that I would be playing uh, the game as uh, it's a lot of work in in that at rough estimate that would be 14 man hours to get what very possibly would be a 30 minute or less video out to talk about the game when I could just say hey Dead or School is on Steam it's an early access go check it out if you're into adult games with about anime school girls fighting zombies um, or if that sounds interesting next we have Dear Apothecary which is a short single-player casual simulator s game that's a lot of tags you're dropping so it seems like what this is is doing the Skyrim 
uh, spell mixing concept with also having to grow elements uh, for your uh, alchemy spells, apothecaries. Uh, this is almost certainly all asset flips and it doesn't look amazingly polished. I like the concept here. I can see why I put this on the follow list because it is a unique idea simulating a uh, apothecary. Uh, although it dangerously gets close to other games like Cook, Serve, Delicious where you're just uh, uh, just doing somebody's job and a game where you're just doing somebody's job. I think Cook, Serve, Delicious is the game I'm thinking about. But there's a lot of games where you're running a counter for a food food restaurant and you, you're just having customers come up to you and, and ordering food and you're having to deliver it. And really you're just acting as a waiter and doing a, a real person's job. At least in this game it, you'd be doing something that hasn't been done for several hundred years by, by most people uh, and is unrecognizable. Uh, that being said... I think there's probably a few games that are RPG style games with this. Uh, uh, let's see, there's a shopkeeper game, at least a couple of them, where you run a shop during the day and then you run through dungeons during the night to find uh, weapon armor and things like that to sell during the shopkeep. Uh, I, there might be an Atelier game where you're running a shop that's a restaurant or a medicine shop. So there, there's been people who have taken this concept and then combined it with a more standard gameplay concept. So th this by itself now seems rather lacking in retrospect. It's $3.99. It hasn't, it's been updated on May. So that's... They're still working on it uh, with patches. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. 50 quests, 28 ingredients, 30 recipes. Being a short game wouldn't be terrible. Two to four hours of playtime. Let's see. Poorly optimized and terrible performance, especially given how crude and rudimentary the graphics are. After a lengthy loading screen, you have a 50% chance of being put in the game environment, which is incredibly difficult to move around in. Even less to look around with camera sensitivity is insanely high. Unusably so. Even with the in-game sensitivity set to lowest, you'll need to drop your mouse DPI greatly to look around normally. So this sounds like it's just a terribly programmed game. Um... Uh, and what's being recommended here are kind of just random games in general uh, because so few people played it. Recommendations are based on the tags in the game and compared to people who have played other games that have other tags. So if somebody is big in the simulation and card based games then playing this will start having this show up on other card based games and other simulation based games. It's not a terrible recommendation system, but it actually it is a pretty terrible recommendation system. Uh, I'll take that back. This next game is called Death Mark and it's tag sexual content or nudity, so let's go back into blurry mode for a brief second here. Steam is still working on uh, having growing pains about whether the screenshots should be family friendly or not i am of the opinion that the game should be 100 percent uncensored and then if you want it censored there should be a free dlc uh they actually do it the other way where it's censored and then if you want it uncensored there's an uncensorship patch dlc uh for a lot of games uh, but the actual storefront i think should always be family friendly even though there is a warning two games like this where it, it verifies your age and asks if you want to see this kind of content quite often depending on what it is in the content um, it's still there's still a few games out there where you will see just full on nudity hardcore nudity on the screenshots and that shouldn't be the case 
And I, I imagine if I w bothered to flag the content uh, on Steam and user posted content is often the same uh, issue. Valve just doesn't have enough people looking at things automatically. So that's a tangent. A strange rumor is spreading through the shadows of Tokyo's H city of mysterious disfigurement has been appearing on the bodies of certain individuals. Anyone who receives the mark will rapidly die of unknown horrifying causes. The countdown to death has already begun. This looks like it is a visual novel horror mystery game. It doesn't seem like it's particularly even complicated. And it also seems like there's some dungeon crawling element to this uh, also. Yeah, because you wouldn't have these RPG elements of dexterity and intelligence and power and spirit power unless there's some kind of RPG dungeon crawling element here. But clearly that's not the main focus of this game because there's no screenshots really pushing it. So this is $49.99, which is incredibly expensive. Apparently it says it has an E3 Metacritic. Now I have a plugin that will tell me if it has a Metacritic score. And that plugin is not saying that it does. 90 on digitally downloaded, something I've never heard of, and 85 on RPG Fan. So either this is really, really popular, or these reviews scores are made up. It's full Japanese audio. This might be a niche, well-known game. Uh, that, uh, let's see. Or it might just be a whole bunch of BS. Let's see. Here's your mature content description. This visual novel in which players fall in amnesia because he uncovers the truth about a mark found in his own. As the ex player explores a mysterious manager, they engage in dialogue and action choices that affect the story's outcome. Some actions lead to instances of violence where players using various items to defend themselves and attack enemy spirits. It has blood and gore, some partial nudity and sexual themes, and one torture-esque scenario. So it's promising quite a lot. And the Danganronpa is also very much a similar theme style game with a lot of death and, and so. Let's see what we have as far as reviews. We have one negative review and 24 positive reviews. So here's the one negative review. The control is so bad I can't bear it anymore. There is no skip option. You have to pre walking, searching, and talking over and over again in a very slow mode after you die. I played almost seven hours, half of them spending on repeating. really love the story, but it seems difficult to keep playing. He does have 8.7 hours. But this person has 21 experience, uh, 21 hours. This person got it for free, so we don't care what they say. This one has about six hours. I bet this probably is a game as a visual novel you'd want to only play once and be in, uh, in all interest. I'd probably only play a visual novel once and most visual novels are built around the concept of of playing them multiple times and seeing all the endings and I never have the patience for this. This person has 54 hours uh, and says an incredibly short uh, hmm. this is more dark than the Corpse Party series. Uh, yeah. So I think this has to go to the wish list as it is. Uh, as it stands. It's over the 20 requisite reviews that I was asking for. It's 95% positive. Uh, the art style here is also, uh, this is what is classified often as the slightly gothic Lolita description uh, of anime that was popular in bits and pieces throughout the 90s, but never the main animation style. But this also is an animation style where the characters that are being drawn are being drawn very much as older characters, adults, where instead of what is usually the Moe style where characters are drawn completely shorter than any, any, any aged human would look, 
and with different proportions than what any aged human. Uh, here you have real realistic animation style, which is very rare nowadays from Japanese developers. Uh, although it may be forced back into popularity, this by the way is a doll. Uh, maybe a living doll, but a doll in the first part. Uh, not intended to be depicted as human at all. Uh, this animation style is closer to the standard anime style, but it's not even uh, it's not even really close to that. So, so you have a different animation style happening here, and horror horror elements. In a lot of ways, this feels like this is probably not as much dungeon crawling as just you go down the wrong hallway and you might have one fight that you very well might die from. So it's probably a game I'd want to save a lot if I can save. Uh, so I can save scum as, as it's called. Press the save button after every choice and then reload if the choice turns out to be wrong. Next game we have is called Death Maze. This is to be dated, and I imagine the reason why I, I left this is because there's no reason that this should have been on the follow list in any way. Uh, last thing I want to do is have games that don't have an actual announcement date on the follow list. If it turns out that it's good, that's one thing, uh, but and I might put it on the wish list when it does come out, but this game could easily be left on Steam storefront as coming soon for years, decades, the rest of eternity. It could be already abandoned and I don't need to clog up the follow list with games that can't even commit to a date. On top of that, Death Maze for what's being shown here is literally nothing. It's just a maze game. Something I would never want to really cover. Uh, so I probably accidentally put this on the fall list. It would be my guess more than anything. I wouldn't mind a maze game, sure, but it, it would have to do something rather special and I've yet to see anything do anything rather special. This kind of feels like the way it's done to play this game is kind of like Line Rider, which is a musical game where you have to click to make the line turn at the right time uh, I found the line runner very hard since I have no real rhythm so that was a game I quickly gave up on next we have deck of ashes which is another card game it is mixed at 62% in the last 30 days it is 77% positive over its lifetime it came out April 11th 2019 so it's gotten enough reviews to be considered let's go ahead and skip uh, to some screenshots and hope that the screenshots will actually load hmm well no so let's see seems like you go different places over a map before you do your card games and that the art style doesn't look terrible and there seems to be a whole camp element to it seems like there's quite a lot here uh, so this may not be so much a collectible card game as it is a deck building game where all the cards are available to you throughout the course of playing the game and this might be just a Slay the Spire clone uh, where you're playing with fantasy and monsters and a different art style. This does feel very much like a Slay the Spire clone. And I'm not sure I want to play a Slay the Spire clone as I haven't gotten around to playing a Slay the Spire. Uh, but I guess I don't really have to make a decision. If I had just seen that this was early access before uh, I should just leave this on the fall list. Uh, Deck of Ashes may be a great game. Uh, the art looks good. Uh, it's mostly positive overall, although it seems like maybe in the last 30 days something has happened. 
Um, I don't see any update that would indicate um, maybe that the game is abandoned. Hmm. Let's see. As it currently stands, the gameplay is dreadfully boring. Early games battles have no meaningful decisions and take ages. The composition of your deck takes much longer to change than Slay the Spire, for example. There's only one playable class, and from what I've seen in three hours of playing, it does not contain any deck archetypes that seem interesting or exciting. Um, interesting idea. This is a great example of interesting ideas implemented incredibly poorly. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of negative reviews in the implementation, but it's early access also. So why should I re review the game now? Let's give it a proper amount of time. It's not even been out for six months to see if maybe it can fix things. This probably is a great example and certainly I could go on a side rant about why you don't need to put your game out in early access. This is probably a great example of a game that definitely did not need to be in early access because if if you are trying to balance it and get player feedback in early access even then you should have had the game be interesting and fun at this point. Yeah, again this is a game that I would feel a lot better if it said it was in beta instead of saying early access. But I guess that means the same thing to most devs these days. So, yeah, this one stays on the follow list. We'll come back in around Christmas and or probably in a year and, and then probably remove it because more than likely they haven't fixed anything since then. Uh, next we are looking at Deep Lands, which looks like it's kind of a VR game or a walking simulator puzzle game um, uh, screenshots still loading long story short though it's early access it came out July 2nd 2018 it's never coming out of early access uh, it said a major new update came out in December and yet it's still in early access and it's not unheard of for companies to shut down uh, on December or December 31st even because you just don't want uh, you don't want to gain any income or do any work or have any expenses in the next year. Uh, of course you would still be gaining income if the game is still on sale on Steam but that may not matter to most people. Um, could just be an emotional decision like give up after 2018 happens or give up after the end of the game hmm standard game it looks like a standard game making program standard generated generated trails and dungeons they use classical music so the whole game it is being described as basically a asset flip game for lack of a better term um, which there definitely are programs like speed tree designed to place trees randomly and make it look like a generated world these could very easily be demos or pre-bought uh, rooms layouts designs from something like the unity or the unreal asset store it would certainly explain why there's a rather big inconsistency with what you're seeing here which is like a fantasy medieval architecture building and what you're seeing over here which is a modern uh, building with uh, con wood construction and piers and electricity and then there's even a pretty big inconsistency between that picture and this picture where it's a farmhouse that's using lanterns so this does very much look like it's an asset flip game it doesn't matter frankly we don't have to wring our hands trying to figure out if it's an asset flip game or not because in the end it's still in early access after six months and it does not look like 
anything of real interest. I'm a little surprised that's on the fall list. Like, so far, before we started covering games that start with the letter D, I've most of the games I've seen are on the level where it makes sense that they were on the fall list, but I've run into two or three games now, it's like, what was I even thinking at that point? Probably what I was thinking is because I was doing the wishlist cleanup last time I did the wishlist cleanup alphabetically, I was probably running out of emotional energy by the time I hit games that start with the letter D. And so I was just putting things in the fall list because I didn't want to make a decision. Um, I guess inherently, since I'm doing this alphabetically again, that may still happen a second time. And games that start with the letter Z then will always be given more, more of a chance than games that start with the letter A. Uh, although I'm trying to give everything a fair shot to make it to the wish list. Uh, we're looking at this game, Deflected Dimension. It seems like it's a it's a roguelike dungeon crawl, not not a dungeon crawler, but a top-down game where you're reflecting the attacks of enemies using a mirror. Um, which looks like a slightly interesting idea, but it kind of is just one ability you would probably have in a game like The Binding of Isaac compared to playing the entire game with that ability. In the end, this only has one review and it's still in early access again. It's $8.99. It probably isn't actually rated by the ESRB if I was to guess. Uh, it has 43 Steam achievements, which looks like an incredibly high amount of Steam achievements for the price and for what the game is. So, yeah, there, there's nothing here that that makes me think I'd want to play this. Randomly generated dungeons, not something that I really want to see in most games. It would have to be a very good roguelike game like the binding of isaac for me to want to see random generated dungeons and even at that uh, there was they were more procedurally generated uh, dungeons than i would call randomly generated uh, so you could figure out certain things about where rooms might be so next we have this game called degeneration which is tagged rpg adventure action dark puzzle Let's see. We smell de degeneration in every single day in our life. We see it. Uh, we speak degeneration. We touch it. We live the degeneration. But that is not what it's supposed to be. That's not a description. I, I feel like you should be able to flag quite a lot of things on Steam. And this is a description where I, I would totally flag and go hey, this is not descriptive of what the game actually is or what you actually do. Uh, looking at this, it seems like it's taken possibly some assets that they bought and put them in shadow and light so you don't recognize that they don't have textures in them or, or that the textures wouldn't match. It seems like it's a platforming game with some kind of monster but it also seems kind of like you're you're just wandering around kind of like a uh, limbo style game but it seems worse this game kind of feels like it's all over the place the black and white would certainly be in line with limbo this trailer seems to only be showing cutscenes in a comic book format There's just nothing here that's visually appealing, quite frankly. Uh, the black and white with very little gray is not interesting. It's $4.99. That's seven user reviews. Let's see if that could give us some more ideas. Um, is there any description here? Like, no. A very little description at all. Uh, of what the game is 
I can't recommend the game when I can't finish it. Basically, there's a boss fight that one shots you and you have to shoot him him six times. I spent two plus hours to get two, five, and four once. It would be nice if it, the normal three shots it would be bad, uh, but six shot is making it near impossible. Uh, poor English is charming, and that's a matter of opinion. Bad optimization, bland aesthetic, broken English, overall poor game feel. So yeah, there's a significant amount of negative reviews here. Uh, they are games that were activated with a key, uh, which is why there's only seven being mentioned here, but uh, if you potentially got the game for free and that's why you activate it with the key and you're still saying it's negative, that's even more damning. So Degeneration is following from the follow list. Uh, next we have Degrees of Separation. This came out February 2019. This is a game I was almost certainly going to put on the wish list, but I wanted to give it a chance. Uh, sometimes you'll see these games from developers and publishers that I don't know really that well. I've never heard of Moondrop. This is probably their first game. I may have heard of Modus Games, but it's not recognizable at the very beginning. Also, this game is selling itself on it being a different style of game in part because it is a puzzle platformer where the players have to stay separated from one side of the world to the other side of the world. So wherever the blue character is standing will be blue, wherever the, the orange-ish red character the standing will, will be orange and red and we saw in that video if the two touch there is an explosion that can be used to make a double jump so there's another game somewhat similar to this where two characters uh, are tied together by rope and have to solve puzzles and there was a game called brothers of tale two sons where there were two characters that also played a role I believe there was a couple other games like that so this is a game designed for co-op but can be played in single player and quite frankly puzzle games with two players probably are easier to play as single player games so that's not a problem it's $19.99 the only thing that would desell me on this game and make me lose interest is if I just saw a lot of negative reviews uh, Metacritic gave it a 74 this arguably is an example of a double A or a single A game that that should have gotten more coverage by mainstream video game media and just didn't. Coming out around February 2019, that there really wasn't even a, a good reason for it to not come out, get more coverage at that time. It's not like there was a a amazingly awesome triple A game that came out in February. It's just that people have such a backlog and uh, they have become so picky and so so trained to only look for AAA games that they, they've stopped in some ways even looking at smaller and lesser known games and giving them a try. So here's, here's, a, uh, here's a game called TikTok A Tale for Two. Uh, this is another co-op game, co-op centric game. I think part of the problem also, uh, PID I believe is another co-op centric game. The Cave is not really a co-op centric game. You can play it co-op, but you can you do just as well playing it as single player. Trying is not really needing to play that in co-op either. I think what kind of happens is that uh, a lot of game developers thought co-op was a lot more popular than it actually is. Most people play single player or they play online co-op or online team based actually. Uh, you don't want even online co-op because then you have to find somebody who's going to work with you and most first person shooters where you have to join a team, half of your team is on the other side of the map and they're not listening to you and they're blaming you and calling you names half the time 
Or at least that's what I've heard from first person shooters, depending on the game you're playing. So here we have a negative review. You don't need to see his profile. This game is advertised online co-op originally on the Steam store. The developer included a post on February 14th that a patch was being worked on for this and they keep us update. So far there has been nothing but silence and the online co-op tag has been removed. The developers avoided questions. This is a now local co-op game until proven otherwise. Fair enough argument. Let's go back up here and look at that and see if that's true. It says co-op, it says local co-op. Uh, typically if it says co-op, I would assume it means online co-op. Uh, February 14th it says uh, online co-op was supposed to be included. This is also not marked as early access. Uh, so when it came out basically the day it was released or came out of early access at least um, and then March 11th hmm. so it seems like they're probably not capable they just don't have the skill to make online co-op or work and this probably feels like I would not be surprised if this is a game that comes to the switch or uh, something like that are there any other negative reviews on that part? Hmm. Hmm. The gameplay seeming colorful and interesting at first falls flat on its face. It becomes very repetitive and dull, especially when you have to control two characters at once. The riddles that you have to solve in order to get other scarves vary too much from extremely easy to I don't know what to do at all. Uh, visuals awesome, soundtrack phenomenal, everything else is frustratingly bad from the widely varying difficulty of the puzzles to the astonishingly shoddy controls. You'd be better watching a playthrough on YouTube than listening to the soundtrack. Give this one a pass. Promised online co-op still not available and the worst is Steam still has online co-op auction. Uh, I think the online co-op is probably a big selling point. Uh, promised online co-op shortly after release four and a bit months later and still not even a word from them. Hmm. The game suit. Hmm. Let's see that's too long of a review here to try and read all of this. The controls are very airy, which makes it difficult for people who are not controller pros to play. So it seems like it has pretty bad mouse and keyboard support. Hmm. 74 on Metacritic. So here you have a pretty, pretty game. Reviews are 71% of 32 reviews. There is some shadiness with the online co-op being missing and removed as a promised thing. It says it has partial controller support, which usually means that it you need a mouse and keyboard to, to launch it from the menu and then it is complete controller support when you're actually in the game. It might be extremely repetitive. That That's not unbelievable by any idea hmm sadly I think degrees of separation falls into that category of a game that has some visual appeal and I'd be willing to struggle through it even knowing that it probably is slightly painful to play uh, particularly knowing that I'm going to have to be controlling both characters but I was gonna have to be doing that anyways and that that is a hard thing to program for certainly uh, because it basically means you have to at all times be able to ignore one character while controlling the other character as for riddles I think I'm pretty good at riddles so 
I don't think I'd really have too much struggle or I could just look up the solution online as far as the riddles go. I kind of want to see Modus Games though. Let's see what else they've made. Uh, what kind of um, relevancy as a publisher. They made a game called Override Mech City Brawl. Um, they made a bunch of DLC. They made a game called Extinction that is mixed reviewed. Um, do they have any upcoming releases? They're making a game called Lost Words Beyond the Page. And they're making a game called Airy and the Secret of Seasons. Well, those don't look like terrible games by any means. So, yeah, degree of separation. So I'm willing to roll the dice on that and put it on the wish list. Now, in all fairness, it may be on the wish list forever and I may never get around to buying it. At $19.99, I'd probably want to pay $10. I think maybe your feelings about this game might drastically change if you only pay $10 for it. Uh, so, there's, there's a lot of factors that could change things. Um, so, let's just move on. Next, we have the game Dehumanized, which this is a weird game because the way it was kind of depicted originally, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, was that there was going to be uh, nudity in it and sexual content kind of for no reason. And though all the gameplay footage, which this looks like very different gameplay footage from what I'd seen before, really didn't make any sense like that would work what you're seeing now on the gameplay footage is a platformer with a gun uh in a chibi anime style chibi being a extremely small uh doll-like uh, depictions of of a character a human uh in a fast-paced shooter fighting while well, fighting a pig right now, it seems like it has split screen. Uh, so I think there might be something to this. Uh, it's, it says it's inspired by Binding of Isaac and Metroid. I would say the gameplay looks a lot more like Metroid, but the 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 mentality, the style is, might be Binding of Isaac style. It's mostly positive. It came out in July. 12th 2018 it's still early access though so the question I guess really comes down to do I want to give it more time and I think I kind of want to do that although six more months and I, at that point I'm gonna have to give up on it it is just probably somebody's uh, concept game they're, they're that they're working on as a side project and they're not making a, enough progress fast enough for me. It looks like they actually did make a decent amount of progress compared to what I remember before. Uh, this is from Sakura Game, and Sakura Game, as a publisher, is known to mostly sell lewd adult sex games. Uh, it's English and traditional Chinese, so this might be the deceptive Chinese game, but I doubt it. I think this actually is a game here it might be incredibly short they're only asking a dollar and 99 cents for it um let's see what more i might be thinking of a completely different game too um i'm looking at the games that are recommended here to see if there's anything Hmm. Let's see. Are there any negative reviews at all? It's basically Binding of Isaac, but side-scrolling. I was having a good time, but then the game completely bugged out on the pig boss, and I wasn't able to continue. If your game has roguelike mechanics, then you can't afford that this kind of things. When the stakes are high, your game needs to be 100% fair and bug free okay fair enough 
player needs to know it was their fault when they died otherwise it is immensely frustrating the art is bad so I'm a fan of The Binding of Isaac in its many re-releases uh, so a side-scroller Binding of Isaac game does make some sense uh, let's see, still an alright game at this price point. Uh, hmm. I feel intermittent lag during the fight needs to be fixed. Hmm. I don't want to read a negative review that starts my boys, quite frankly. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, this game is in a weird position. I'll give it six more months, I guess, but more than likely, it'll still be in early access and making a binding of Isaac. It was crazy that I believe it was Edmund McMillan was the creator of Binding of Isaac, uh, or worked on it at least in part. It was crazy that he was able to make that game and it became super popular and he was able to continuously add content to the game and then remaster the game and then uh, add more content to the remaster and then add more DLC. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff added to The Binding of Isaac and in comparison, I don't think any other developer could do that and I, I think even Edmund McMillan would admit that he probably nearly killed himself overworking and obsessing on adding content uh, but it certainly was successful financially for him too because people were buying the same game or DLC for the game multiple times um, a side scrolling game as a concept not a bad idea so but I, I guess all I can do is leave this on the fall list uh, I certainly can't put it on the wish list. Uh, and yeah, this art style, totally out of line and disconnected to this art style. There's no reason to even have your thumbnail look like this. Uh, and as far as all the adult stuff, it seems like that's all been censored out or completely removed, uh, which makes sense. Like, I don't know why it was in there in the first place. It also doesn't make a lot of sense why Secure Game is the publisher, but once you have a publisher, that is that. Okay. Next, we have a game where I have to be logged in, so I can try and reload this, uh, but it's just going to say the same thing, I'm sure. So, um, this game, I guess, will have to be considered later because I could go blurry and try and log in but it, it frankly would not be worth the effort to do it this is clearly an adopt uh, a adult game that is somewhere between dehumanized and uh, demons tilt so I will just look up what the name of that game is it's probably an adult game I'll consider it it's probably not very good it's probably an adult visual novel and not there's really nothing more to say about it uh, well there's nothing to say about it right now at all because I have no idea what the game is uh, if it is important that we cover it I'll cover it in the next recording when we cover games we'll start with E which I assume will be the next recording Although, we're at DE, and there might be a lot more games starting DE. Demon's Tilt, though, is a pinball game. I like pinball games. Uh, I have pin a lot of the pinball arcade tables, and or almost all of them, and a lot of the pinball FX tables. But when you get to the third tier, or third choice for a pinball uh, game on Steam, there's not a lot of competition you have the two major ones and then you have things like this where it is a it seems to me like this is a unique pinball table that you couldn't really make in the real world and it's not really trying to uh, imitate a real world pinball table this came out January 21st 2019 It's rated 93% positive it 
looks fine. It's widescreen, even though the pinball table is at a more appropriate ratio. Uh, it's not got an angled view to it, from what I can tell. It seems like it's always going to be top down. Uh, it's early access. Uh, I shouldn't be considering this game, though. I just failed to realize it was early access uh, because, yeah, it kind of doesn't matter at this point, so we don't need to consider it. Once it comes out of early access, uh, then I would probably put it on the fall list. In a, or, no, on the wish list. It's already on the fall list. Um, but until it does, I'm definitely not willing to buy or purchase games that are in early access. I just as a standard refuse uh so next game we have is called demon's tear uh, which seems like it is an rpg adventure game I'm calling it an rpg roguelike with elements of action adventure and arcade you're just trying to get all of the tags aren't you so your top down basically twin stick shooter game in a dungeon uh, the videos here kind of hiding the fact that this is really just 8-bit pixel graphics um, of which there are a lot of games like this and almost none of them catch my interest here you've thrown in some 8-bit uh, anime characters with big cleavage windows to uh, for the cheesecake like every single character that's been shown that's female has cleavage windows and large busts being depicted. Uh, let's see. I don't think I really need to see more. Most games like this, if you are leaning on selling using sex to sell, that means you realize your game is not that good. This is $9.99. Well give it a look on the reviews but I've pretty much made up my mind that I don't want to play this game it, that. once you enter the game you're forced to watch an interlude and you're not able to open the menu and I've been told about the keyboard settings changing the sound level they are very noisy on default man this is 2019 how can a game be made like that you want to change the game into windowed mode and lower the sound then enjoy it uh, well, that's not much of a negative review as a complaint about how the game is made. Let's see. Seems like all the other reviews are negative in different languages, which for what is effectively a JRPG, that's not surprising. Uh, that being said, this game doesn't support Chinese, Korean, or Japanese, so why are any of these reviews valid like this is an asian language this is russian or at least similar to russian uh there's no russian or asian language support so if somebody's reviewing the game that isn't even being sold to them uh that being said yeah i really don't have interest in this also, I would say there's a ton of stuff on the screen when you're fighting. Uh, having four of these on screen at all times, taking up screen real estate is ridiculous. Having three different keys colors on the side of the screen, having a magic bar and a life bar and a coin bar and then a stats button and then a kills count. There's something going on in nearly every corner except for this corner uh, that's just way way too much on screen yeah this this one doesn't catch my attention so demon's tears getting removed next we have Duro milk bauer uh, which is a German game where you run a milk farm uh, it's a simulation management game and I thought that it would be interesting as a kind of weirdo game to run a simulated milk farm. It, this, for the most part, I think is 
probably mostly just a simulation clicker game from the looks of the video. Uh, the problem is this was already a weirdo uh, game in the first place and very very niche. Uh, something that very few people would want to play. It only has seven reviews. Came out August 21st in 2018. It's $2.99 so it's not extremely expensive but yeah it just kind of falls out of relevancy <laughs> here's a negative review uh, here's a negative review uh, it seems like there's a ton of clicking way too much clicking in it meanwhile you could play several other simulation games uh, that would have a lot more relevancy than this so yeah my hope to play as a milk farmer at some point in the future will go unaddressed and unfulfilled because yes this is so far out of being relevant it's such a weirdo game uh, there's no way you can justify even two dollars and 99 cents for it for what is effectively a clicker. Moving on, we have a game called Daru the Art of Cooperation, which this looks like you have two colors and you, the color shape can't touch the other color shape. Hmm. I assume you're controlling both of these. And I think I saw some somebody on Giant Bomb actually play this. And he said it was relatively alright. 70 puzzles isn't asking a lot as far as time commitment. 81% of, uh, of 11 reviews are positive. This came out November 7th, 2018. This is an example of a game where yes it is still niche and not very relevant but at least an, at least a few people played it apparently it was a Wii game uh, not Wii game, Switch game boy uh, originally and so it's been ported to PC not that being a Switch game adds any, any relevancy to it $14.99 uh, is really expensive Single player is doable, it seems. Uh, so I will, can play it. English and German, 24 achievements. Hmm. Let's see. The thing here is if you're going to play single player, I'm not. There's a. Single player, challenge your twin stick skills to tackle the puzzle solo. So you would have to use one left stick and one right stick to control things. But you can play it on one controller, which is better than having to pull out two controllers to play a game on PC or using a keyboard and mouse and a controller. Or So here we are on reviews. No two-player control layout for local co-op. You need to play on the same controller or keyboard. Terrible design skip. Well, that's bad. That also, though, wouldn't be an issue for me. The main concern here is the price. $14.99. But I guess I don't really have to consider the price. I can put this game on the wish list if it never gets down to a reasonable price, which is really less than five dollars for something like this then i'll just never buy it so i can put daru the art of cooperation which is a game totally built around co-op play and that i would totally only play as a single player game uh, on the wish list and it probably will just sit there forever maybe i'll increase my standards and remove it from the wish list in six months to a year's time uh, moving on we have a game called descending which this might be a real game or this might just be a asset flip game there's 
so much you can buy from the Unity or Unreal Asset Store that, yeah, this looks a lot like PUBG. This looks very, very much like PUBG. Uh, but does that mean anything? Hmm. It's tagged Early Access, Early Access. It came out November 14th, 2018. It's still in Early Access. It's $7.00. It's eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. It was the last updated December fourth, twenty eighteen. So this is a this is a PUBG clone that has been abandoned. I'm not sure why I was even considering it. I guess maybe because it was only a single player. Maybe I got something from that. They're calling it a hardcore open world survival game when you're alone. Uh, clearly, you're not alone if you're fighting monster and this monster design is not actually terrible um, the idea of a survival game where you're being stalked by a monster that's randomly generated might work that being said this isn't the game to do it this is an easy pass so it's not making it to the it's to the wish list and it's getting removed next we have desert child which is tagged racing action rpg simulation and sci-fi that's a lot if you're you're a hungry young hover bike racer who needs to get to earth before it explodes uh hunt bounties throw races and do whatever you can to get to mars in the grand prix so it seems like the majority of the game you're doing a side shooter game you're riding a hover bike and shooting people and then maybe there's some other elements to the gameplay maybe not this may just those all might just be cutscenes um, maybe there's some story it's hard to trust a game where you're doing multiple things particularly from a a unknown I I've never heard of this publisher I've never heard of this it's claiming it's on Xbox and everything else. It's like on everything. And maybe this did come out on other things and I just don't remember. Yeah. It, it's hard to trust that a game is good when it has multiple gameplay mechanics. This is $11.99. It's 86% positive. Um... Let's look at the revel the reviews. It's M for mature. Let's see. Visually striking but shallow. Fun for a little bit, but don't expect anything deeper. Uh, gameplay is about four to two to four hours max with a little replay value. Considering I like and tinker with bikes in real life, might be biased. I wish there was more customization and more more feel like actual racing game is more like a shallow shooter sim life on pair of those free flash games from back in the day pretty but not a lot of substance worth a buy went on sale i wouldn't recommend it at full price hmm. there's another negative review that's way too long uh yeah it seems like this this game is just not going to be polished enough or interesting enough or long enough. Particularly when you're asking $12. I, I wouldn't want to pay $6 for a 2-4 to four hour experience uh, that looked like this and seems like this kind of game. What this kind of game seems like. So this is another game that I can pass over. I don't remember even seeing that game. Here we have another game that has been completely removed from Steam. So it would have been something after Desert or DES in the title. It's been completely removed from Steam, which means it probably violated Steam's policies in one way or the other. Or they just decided to remove it for other reasons. Now this one's tagged Sexual Content. But I don't think there's anything here, so let me just go blurry for a brief second. And 
Let's look at all these screenshots. Yeah, there's nothing here. So, this game, Desire, I wanted to like this game so much. It's a point-and-click adventure game that has this kind of black and white, brown and, and black artistic style with shades of red. Um, and it's built around the idea of desire and the tense emotions in four chapters. Uh, and it, it's kind of weird, certainly, to start your story as a young boy, uh, potentially having a crush on your teacher. And I think that might be the storyline theme as it goes throughout, because I'm assuming its sexual desire is a main desire here in at least one of the chapters. It's $9.99 uh, sports several languages. It's gotten a bunch of awards from indie developers, which doesn't really mean anything. Tel Aviv awards. So is this a Tel Aviv developer? Maybe. Um, let's see. But when you look at the reviews, I really wanted to like the game, although it hits all the bases for me. Point and click puzzle, cool animation style, beautiful music, and the writing. The writing is so pretentious and preachy about philosophical and political ideas. I got tired of reading the awkward conversations between the characters that I ended clicking through most of it. Uh, unfortunately, the dialogue is too preoccupied with its own brilliance that it hinders deep subjects like mental illness and sexual identity the game tries to explore. Kudos to the artists, musicians, and colors for exceptional work on this. Unfortunately, lost in the snobbish, it's not a phase mom, Tumblr-esque writing. Uh, hmm. I really tried hard to, to play longer, but I didn't enjoy a single thing about the game. From a 26, 2018 adventure game, it's very disappointing to not have voice acting for the characters that is very true for point and click adventures is everything should have voice acting or it really you could probably just run it through a text-to-speech engine and make it sound pretty good particularly if you just paid for a good text-to-speech uh, software uh, it could sound very very human-like uh, there are so many amazing affordable adventure games. I recommend looking for something else. The game is annoying and cheap. There's no direction, no destination, no good plot, which I'd like to complete. There's actually no voice acting. The narrative narrator doesn't count. All the dialogues were boring so far and made me click through them. And of course, the boy seems to be gay plus he's young, so he must keep saying about uh talk i guess that's keep talking about uh about boobs boobs and penises uh, so pretentious so it seems like what irritated people is that the game was poorly written and it also seems like a lot of people were in, uh, irritated by the story that was being tried to told, be told here. And I am certainly more than happy to play a game, game about a homosexual boy and, and talking about sexual identity. Sure, that is fine. The problem, though, is people who often make games like that are terrible at making games. And then they complain when people don't buy their games because they're terrible and there is also a problem where most mainstream video game journalists are white knights and social justice warriors so they will talk about uh, progressive politics extremely liberal political ideas and games that push those ideas for way more a great example is how most mainstream journalists will not talk about any visual novels at all unless they have some level of LGBTness in them. 
Um, and usually that means the visual novels are uh, Western made. And that's where you get games like Butterfly Soup, Dream Daddy uh, Dad Simulator, and Lady Killer in a Bind being talked about nonstop in the year that they came out, which I believe was in mostly in 2018, maybe tw a little bit of 2017. Meanwhile, major games like Clonade were released on Steam at the exact same time and no coverage whatsoever. Thousands upon the thousands of visual novels came out at the same time that uh, those three games came out and only those three games got talked about and that is an imbalance that's just bad journalism it's bad criticism as for without getting into much of a rant here though the game's bad uh, and it's not just because of its politics or its story writing uh, it's bad first and foremost and there's quite a few games like that on steam um some of which are so bad that even though they might look interesting, uh, um, they, they, if I were to cover them, it would come with so much controversy that it's not worth covering. Uh, the other problem here I, I think people would have, and I think I would partially have, is there is a puritanical view particularly in the united states about talking about any kind of sexual identity in a young child or even a teenager so uh, that is something that is a slight problem uh, or just a off topic topic that you don't want to go to hmm unless you hit unless you're very very careful telling that story so desire is being removed from the follow list and not being put on the wish list and i may actually at some point have to block it just to remind myself not to put it back on the follow list it's a shame though visually uh if i don't make it blurry visually this i like this art style i still would like a noir-esque art style that looks something like this uh, but whatever moving on we this is taking way too long next we have despotism 3k uh, despot is uh, is power hungry madman i think is what a despot is i i know the general definition but i guess i don't know the actual definition of of the word humanity is enslaved by an ai which is awesome because we're on the right side of the conflict exploit puny humans to extract power and build your own empire okay so this is effectively the matrix where you're plugging humans in to use them as batteries um, but in a lot of ways I guess this is probably just a clicker game with a funny idea uh, this is 82% positive of 214 reviews so people have played it it's out of early it's not in early access I don't know if it ever was um, seems like a update of a second campaign was added March uh, 25th so they're still working on it as of this recording because today is like March 27th I think well, yeah maybe it's May no yeah it's May I know it's an M month I don't see anything here terrible it's a dark humor style game uh, I don't see anything that would scare me away this probably is a game that I'd only want to play for a few hours English and Russian so it might be a Russian troll game but it is also possible that it is just a joke game um, hmm. let's see what the reviews say 
I have a negative review. Can't recommend this game. The difficulty is full tilt from the start. Be prepared to play the beginning of the game over and over again. There's only one correct path to upgrade items, and if you miss the time, forget it. You will run out of power and game over. Glad I got this game on a good sale so I didn't spill the full price. Uh, I hate that you can only recommend or not. Blah, blah, blah. Half of the reviews are like, how come I can't just put a neutral review? It's like, make a decision. Thumbs up or thumbs down or don't say anything at all. Uh, RNG event, negative review. One bug cost me the best run I had. Hmm. Well, I do find the game funny and interesting. It is far too easy to get a single bad perk or to have something happen that will eventually kill the game. So it does seem to me like there's a flaw in the gameplay design that will just cause you to uh, weirdly random, artificially stressful by design due to the randomness, but not due to actual challenge. Tentative thumbs down, the constant energy requirement increases grueling. Too repetitive and the micromanaging is boring. Um, very repetitive yeah I think I see that what was the price on this game seven dollars and ninety nine cents I think I kind of see that this is a clicker game with too much randomness this is concerning uh, that where was that screen the modifiers available here seem to be rather limited um, so that's a little concerning too hmm. I'm not 100% sure what you're controlling either are you seems like you're clicking these buttons and then these claws are just controlling themselves to all and it seems like you're artificially always trying to increase your energy until you upgrade or spend the energy hmm hmm let's look at this developer see if they made any other games nope I think this one's a skip though I, I don't think I can I can take what I I like here which is a a dark humor uh, joke game and spend even half the price tag so even if it was only four dollars that's still too expensive for the actual gameplay I'm getting here which the gameplay does not sound like it is particularly intriguing or interesting it looks like it's just a clicker game and a bad clicker at that uh, so yeah I think Despotism 3K uh, 3000 can leave. I've got plenty of games on the wish list, good games to play. I don't need to play a mediocre joke game. Uh, let's see. Next, we have a game called Destination Primus Vita. It's a narrative first person episodic puzzle game set in the sci fi universe. Follow the adventures of one of the main six characters. Um, well, they travel across the cause most Prius Vita to complete their vital mission to save life on Earth. Okay. I always suspect when I see videos with streamers that the game is not particularly good. Um, it says it's an indie adventure puzzle sci-fi game. So is this the kind of puzzles you're solving? Uh, the animation style here seems kind of rough uh, and in the movement hmm. Primus Vida sounds like a weird name for a planet I kind of like the weirdo art style of these characters but I, I feel like they might move pretty herky-jerky at an extremely low frame rate yeah, that, that did not look like a smooth movement. 
this feels like this might be a game where there was somebody who knew how to do 3d modeling and animating and really didn't know how to make a game that's thus simplistic puzzles combined with hyper realistic 3d models and it doesn't seem like there's even a ton of puzzles every screenshot here seems mostly built around the game also this says episode one austin so is this the complete game or is this just episode one um, episode one austin soundtrack comic comic two yeah when you're selling comics and soundtracks that's potential hmm. let's see let's see they put out a bundle a special price that's cheaper than the game i guess that is true if you buy the bundle it's five dollars and sixty cents where it would be eight dollars to buy the whole thing um, but what is questioning here this seems like this is the first chapter it says of the six standalone chapters each focusing on one of the game's character based on the comics of the same name so it seems like somebody's made a comic and and now they're trying to sell a video game to sell the comic uh, let's see what are our reviews say negative things avoid too long didn't read missing from the title are a remappable keyboard and mouse access settings this is most important as the game requires navigation in a 3D setting with a large number of object interactions and puzzles. Uh, okay. The premise is a space adventure to, in search for water in the universe. Earth is run out. Follow five crew members and discover their stories. The art is pretty and the levels uh, aesthetic. I, I don't think that's spelled quite right. I think you need an A there. Or maybe that's aesthetic. Maybe that's a word. But the dialogue is weak. The early puzzles seemed okay, but the fi but fighting the controls got the better of me and I had to stop. Refund requested. Sorry, just too annoying for words. I do like the graphics and the, the reality bending sets, but the rest not so much. The labyrinth sections or the final straw. There's an exercise in frustration. So that's negative reviews, two of which. Hmm. Seems to me like there is only the first chapter here. Um, let's look at the positive reviews and see how long they played. An hour. This one says 27 hours. Let's ignore that one. Five hours, two hours, 17 hours, three hours. Four hours, four hours, three hours, six hours, 2.4 hours. Um, yeah. Ignoring the longer time counts, this seems like it's an extremely short game. It feels like it is, uh, it is just the first act and it's being sold as if it's not the first act. Um, Although they are saying it's episodic puzzle name. So yeah, this needs to leave the follow list. Uh, also, it's not really relevant because in six months it hasn't gotten even 13 people who actually bought the game to review it. So moving on. We have a game called Destroy the World. I'm hoping we're getting close to the end. I'm hoping. Uh... So this is a game where you play as a big pink blob and you just play as like Godzilla and break things and get larger as you're breaking things. Um, I thought the premise was slightly interesting. Uh, I think the pink blob is probably a terrible character to be designed and it would make a lot more sense if you if they redesigned it to look like something completely different um, 
in a lot of ways this is an asset flip game it, it kind of has to be uh, this feels a lot like a 3d rampage style game without uh, any of the creatures from rampage it's 99 cents it came out february 8th 2019 at that price i don't think it would be too hard to put this on the wish list just would be a matter of negative reviews so there's 10 of 34 game negative reviews we have bland boring next to no content not gonna lie expected way better of this game so like a solid plot no specification on what the heck you're supposed to do very very repetitive in it's kind of a web browser game we used to play back in school um, the idea of destroying stuff with a big blob is a good one the graphics are about right and there's been some effort put into developing the game in the developer's own style there's one major flaw you have to destroy everything and it actually feels like work looking for the last bits of buildings and trees that would be a major problem for any game is if you've missed some small fraction so even though the game is cheap seeing those negative reviews those are the things that would would convince me not to put this on the fall list or the wish list uh, can't ever keep the two names straight yeah even at 99 cents if it's just blurring bland and repetitive I guess the search goes on for the Godzilla style game that lets you run around and there are a few Godzilla style games I just don't think they're on Steam uh, so moving forward we have detective case and the clown bot in the Express killer this is 83% positive with 12 reviews it's a point-and-click adventure and retro looking game with 8-bit graphics or pixely graphics nine dollars and 99 cents there's also let's see this game murder in hotel lisbon and then the express killer hmm. so there's two games under this title hmm 23 achievements English and Portuguese doesn't really tell me anything how many negative reviews too hmm. are they gonna load I don't think they are okay well I think what this boils down to is it is a point and click adventure and I'm a sucker for point and click adventures so I think this does probably justify being put on the wish list the the thing that will fall down here is the idea of the price I probably would only want to play two dollars and 99 cents for this game uh, so putting it on the wish list is fine because I'll never really buy it anyways which is frankly close to true for I would say at least 50% of the games on the wish list so I'll never get around to purchasing them or I'll never get around to playing them moving on the next game we have and I guess the thing I also should searches this game uh, which I guess this game also needs to be put on the uh, wish list so so we'll know that Let's see back to that all right so after that cleanup work 
Next game we have is Detective D, The Silk Rose Murders. This is interesting because this is basically a point and click adventure uh, game again, but it's coming from a Chinese perspective and I, as much as I decry and hate low effort cheap Chinese products in the form of video games, uh, I kind of love to see a decent good Chinese product. So it's 93% positive if a significant amount of these are in English as far as the positive reviews. This should go on the wish list. Um, it's $10.99. It's just English and simplified Chinese. So all I need to see is that there are positive reviews in English that don't look like they were just made up reviews or paid for reviews. Which... Um, hmm. This does not look bad. This seems like these are legitimate reviews. There are 13 negative reviews to 183 positive ones, which kind of feels a little uh, small on the negative review side. 10 achievements, which doesn't make it feel like an achievement game. The price feels right. This looks like a good Chinese centric in theme and Chinese in development point and click adventure. You're playing as uh, a detective uh, he's tracking down a serial killer uh, don't think there's much more that you need to know I would be happy to see if Detective D became a series of games that came out uh, going forward as long as they are good quality and continue to be interesting we don't really have a lot of point and click adventures still being made it would be nice if there was full audio either in chinese or english and chinese uh, that argument is still very valid that point and click adventure games in 2019 should be full talkies as they used to be called but it's not being implemented as a hard and fast rule so next we have another point and click adventure game called detective gallo which you're playing as a duck and in a point and click adventure it's 96 percent positive it's 14.99 cents that's too expensive certainly but i am a sucker for for point and click adventures this one has full audio in English and in Italian, uh, so probably is originally an Italian game. Uh, let's see. Remarks become annoying to say the least. A lot of point and click actions are somewhat random and has no locks. logic. Uh, well, that's pretty typical for a point and click it's too confusing which makes it boring that's typical for a point and click adventure game too uh, so those negative reviews aren't particularly concerning and those are the only two of the 46 reviews here so detective gallo is making it to the wish list so let's move further and hopefully we're still going on next we have another point and click adventure game actually this is tagged as a hidden object game and looking at the video it actually is a hidden object game detective sherlock pug hidden object relaxing games you really don't even have to go down to the reviews here i don't want to cover hidden object games even if this is only a dollar 99 cents uh this might be a kid friendly uh, a simplistic hidden object game but I don't think encouraging your kids to play hidden object games is, is a great use of their time either so this will get removed from the follow list next we have a game called dev.me you're playing a game as a game developer and encounter typical problems like eating and sleeping you need to correctly allocate your time for human needs hobbies and work to live another day as an indie developer so this is a self-referential style of game um, 
it's rated 75% of 48 user reviews. Uh, it's early access. It came out January uh, 17th, 2019. I guess because it's early access, though, I can just leave this on the follow list. Um, quite frankly, um, as an actual game, it seems like it's not that good. But I'll give this a little bit more time. I'm not sure what I could really say or what you really take as a general video game player knowing that video game developers lives suck and are difficult. Yes, it's true. And when it comes to the field of programming games, you are definitely getting overworked and underpaid when you could easily go and work at any other programming style job and get paid a lot more. And treat it a lot better so yeah we know it's there. there there's some other arguments that could be said that uh, video game companies in general are overcharging and then not putting the money that they overcharge for the price of a game towards properly paying their employees and that uh, video game companies in general are uh, doing bad for their employees the employees also cause a lot of their own problems it's a very incestuous style of field to work in because you are uh, uh, constantly trying to get your friends hired at one video game company or the other so it's very hard for any new student coming out of college who has a game programming degree to find a job and so it becomes very much a group think environment where everybody thinks the same everybody's friends with everybody else and it's all about who you know and not how well you can develop a game which inherently that pretty much assumes that a lot of game developers out there aren't the best people for the jobs uh, here we have another game that was completely removed from Steam so it was between dev.me and Dia Stone Memories. Uh, so two games that have been completely removed for one reason or another. That's pretty much all I need to say though. Because if it's been completely removed from Steam, I can't buy it. I can't get it. Uh, there's quite a few games that have been removed from Steam that I really wish I could get. Uh, for instance... Uh, American McGee's Alice and Alice Madness Returns, I believe, are removed from Steam and could easily be returned to Steam if the if they wanted to sell it uh, on Steam. They just don't because it's such a niche game that they can sell it on their own storefronts. This thing, this looks like an actual horror game, adventure game. Let's see, it's. 71% positive. It's discounted right now for $3.84. On March 21st, um, Act 2 is late. They've launched an Indiegogo. So it feels like this is an episodic game. Seems like it was inspired by PT, the playable teaser for Silent Hills that is never going to be made let's see very clunky seems unfinished um, negative 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 positive 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 negative so yeah I think this game would cause problems being on the wish list because I'd accidentally buy it not doing the research to see that Act 2 is not out and that they're going to try and sell Act 2 probably as Die Stone something else. Uh, so this is a game that's best suited as being removed from the fall list. And quite frankly, there's nothing here amazing that looks like you'd be missing out on. The, the art polish is good, but this might just be asset flips, really horror games have gotten very very good at buying pre-made pre-rendered environments and art assets and making it look good uh, layers of fear is kind of the ultimate 
instance of that where you have a game that is pretty much feels like it's all pre-bought art assets from the Unity store. Uh, but then the game developers really didn't know how to program a game. So you end up walking through halls for the entirety of the game, seeing jump scares, and then being asked to do very simplistic puzzles every now and then, but very little gameplay. Moving on, next we, next we have a game called Dick Wild. Uh, this, I believe, is a VR game where you're playing as a redneck style character who is fishing and shooting things standing in one place. Uh, most VR games are standing in one place shooting at something. Here it seems like piranhas are jumping towards you and you're hunting them. Uh, it's a VR only game, $14.99. It is 100% positive of 15 user reviews. So it, it does feel like an intense arcade style game where you're shooting lots of things. And, and I think this game in particular compared to so many other VR games understands the concept of trying to have fun compared to uh, doing just the bare basics and a very generic thing. Now, I will say in this video, you're seeing the, the player lean left and right. There's, I don't believe any technology that exists that would know that the player is leaning left or right uh, in VR headsets or such. So I don't think that actually is required. Uh, yeah, as I scroll down here, all recommended. But it is a VR game, so it's just going to stay on the wish list. Anyway, it's going to stay on the fall list. Because I'm not putting any VR games on the wish list. Because even if there is one good game, which is pretty much all I've ever found, uh, one potentially good game, I'm not willing to spend the hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy a VR headset. And I probably never will. Uh, next we have a game called Dis Ire E. Uh, Dias Irie, -e? I don't know if this is Japanese or not. Interview with the Kaizu Kalu Bay. Uh, let's see, it's an all new side story based on the LDO member Wilhelm Ehrenberg. It sounds like an anime, but I do not recognize this at all. Uh, the legendary Kaizu Bay recounts the tale of conflict and suffering long past. This is 100% positive of 18 reviews. Came out February 19th. It's tag sexual content, so let's go a little blurry for a second just to make sure that there isn't something here. Hmm. Let's see. So yeah, there's nothing I'm seeing here that's on the screenshots that's too objectionable, although to be fair, two screenshots from now you will see that one of the characters is wearing a symbol on their arm very uh, in the same fashion but not similar to either a swastika or a Buddhist manji uh, which is the same symbol and it was a Buddhist symbol first and the Nazis stole it. Uh, that being said, uh, Japanese people are not told and do not take the history of, of World War II the same way that everybody else in the world does. So they they at the very least seem to have a weird fetish for the fashion and they wore Omarni outfits. So the fashion is actually rather good. Um, otherwise this feels like this is just a visual novel. It looks like it's probably fine as a visual novel. Um, I don't know why I'm really looking at it with 18 reviews because that's still two reviews short. That being said, it's $19.99. It's got full Japanese uh, audio. What's in interesting here is it's mislabeled and you'll see a lot of this where it probably also supports Japanese interface and subtitles. Uh, so yeah, unless there's a negative review to say here 
the the only other thing would be are there other games in this series and I guess there are there's act 2 and then there's Amanta Cementos um, so this game is free to play and it's very positive this one ha doesn't have enough reviews this one doesn't have enough reviews I'm gonna have to do some research here uh, because if this is a side story to a game series a visual novel series I should get the first game in the series which I guess if I click see all here then how how does this break down I guess this is the first game in the series and then there's no upcoming games so there's only two games or some of the games are from a different developer Let's see what this does new releases new releases new releases so this game is rated 83% positive uh, it's tagged as a visual novel it's free to play but then they want you to buy the first scene and the second scene and this was released in 2017 so this really is a $40 game uh, just free to play at the beginning as like a demo probably more than anything else and this came out in 2017 before they really were letting any nudity or sexual content in the game so this is probably censored somewhat hmm I think what you do here is you fall down to mob rule I think that's what you do uh, so you should play the routes in this order uh, any, well, any other way you'll be spoiled and confused hmm. let's see well I guess what I do is I put this game on the wish list and I think about it as a free to play game I almost certainly would never realize that there are DLC elements that I have to buy and then you would want to try this first game see if there's enough here to play with the Japanese full audio to make sense and then you would want to work your way to the side story and yeah, I guess that's just pretty much how, how this breaks down. Um, now, uh, what I'm not mentioning here is quality or content. It really is just mob rule. It's like, if enough people like it and it's, it's satisfying the people who see screenshots like this or this or this and you're willing to buy the game and you enjoy the game after you buy it then it's selling itself well and that's all I really care about as a critic I'm more than willing to play something that looks like a weird darker horror uh, visual novel although it might be extremely long too and this definitely is not a top tier uh, visual novel because if it was I would recognize it either because it was based off a light novel or an anime series or movie moving on next we have a game called dimensions versus which is mixed at 63 percent this looks like it's obviously a smash brothers clone um, of which there's been a lot of smash brothers clones made and all have failed to succeed at being good apparently it was updated in December to version 0.2.0.0 which is a ridiculously small number um, 
So don't really have to make any decision here at all. It's getting removed. It's in early access. It's been out for six months. There's no reason to give it any more time. I don't know why I gave it that much time, quite frankly. Next we have a game called Dirt 4, uh, which I played Dirt 3 and liked. I believe Dirt 4 is missing some of the features that Dirt 3 have and had. Uh, Dirt, in general, Dirt 3 has been removed, and there was a middle game between Dirt 3 and Dirt 4, which was Dirt Rally, and Dirt 4 feels a lot more like the side game Dirt Rally that was missing features than than a proper sequel to Dirt 3. I also believe that covering Dirt 3 caused a lot of those videos to get content ID for the music in it. 65% uh, of people are positive on this game and I have since, uh, sin in between the time of putting this on the follow list and looking at it now, I've since learned of the features that I'm missing. Codemasters is a weird one. They, they sometimes make great rally car racing games. Um, uh, but sometimes they make a bad one. And here you have some just basic, very bad, not fun, soulless rattling around the globe. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Is there a better... Soggy physics maps are either too easy or hell on earth. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the Dirt series and rally car racing in particular is a design for people who are like high accuracy simulation players more than somebody who just wants to play a fun arcade racing style game uh, often races in dirt for uh, you don't even see the other cars it's just about driving as perfectly as possible uh, and some of these videos are trying to make it look really flashy and that's really not what the experience is for most of the time so I've seen enough here, though 66% is not valid enough. It's not a good enough review to play Dirt 4. Maybe Dirt 5 will be better. Seems like they have an A team and a B team that works on the games. That is often the case. Next we have a game called Disjoint. Uh, this looks like a puzzle game of some sort, but it falls out of relevancy because it only has three reviews on it. This is a single screen Unity puzzle game, as, as I described them, where all the menu buttons and everything are on one screen and there's no scrolling or anything like that. Um, that inherently doesn't mean it isn't a good puzzle game, it just means that the programming is probably more simplistic than you'd think. Actually, I guess I have to take that back because here is a secondary screen in the form of a cutscene and here is a level selector that looks like a different screen and here's a different screen so it actually isn't a, what I would qualify as a single screen uh, Unity game. Although it seems weird that you have this crisp minimalistic looking game and then the cutscenes show this guy with a pig. $2.99 Price is not even asking a lot. Ten and Steven achievements. Uh, it doesn't matter what the reviews say though. Let, let's speed things up here. Even if it's 100% positive, it doesn't matter. It's fallen out of relevancy. This isn't a game that, as a puzzle game, interests me in, a, in any way. So it's leaving the fall list. Uh, I've kind of played my fill of single screen Unity games and simplistic minimalistic puzzle games. So unless I need to, unless I see an amazingly new concept uh, in the gameplay, I'm probably done. Let's see, next we have Dr. Flow, 
puzzle game of deduction and decision making. You assume the role of a doctor who decides tests are performed on patients and then what order. Keep in mind cost efficiency. Um, quite frankly, doctors generally don't do that unless you're a medical researcher or, or an experimental scientist. Uh, doctors, as far as medical doctors, MDs, uh, follow the standard of care that is available and known and educated to them. They do the same thing for every patient based on the symptoms. They don't go for one patient, let's try something different. Uh, it's the, the TV show Dr. House actually is a great example of what doctors don't do. <laughs> where he tries different different things that would never be tried and uh, experiments and does a lot of guesswork. So this is $5.99 since it has six user reviews. It came out June 27th, 2018. It's English and Dutch. I hope doctors don't experiment on patients in, in Dutchland. Uh, let's see. So this game is about constructing a decision tree uh, of class, class characters, classified characters, uh, categories using given nodes that have specific cost. Okay, the idea is nof novel. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it starts out interesting, but I don't find, see myself 100% completing this. In the near future it's not fun for people who want to aim for 100 percent all the time because the metric used for judging the player is very poorly designed it's a drag and drop puzzle game so we have like two negative reviews and some positive of of nine reviews um I think I'm gonna lean towards the negative reviews here. It doesn't look like it's an interesting enough interface and implementation of its concept. And I think its concept is probably a little flawed too. Kinda looks like a mobile game with all of these elements on screen, a pause button in particular. And it's asking six dollars, which is too expensive. So let's move on. Oh man, this has gotta be the last game. Dojagi, the Korean pottery. Uh, Dojagi in Korean means pottery. You create pottery with both your hands in virtual reality, led by Dojagi. Well, wait a minute. So you make pottery because you're led by pottery? That doesn't make sense. That being said, a VR game where you make, uh, where you're throwing clay and and making uh, pots is not a terrible idea for a VR game because normally doing this you require a level of space, a level of equipment. If you're going to fire your pots yourself then you need a relatively expensive kiln uh, and you're going to make a level of, of mess regardless of how clean you try to keep your work area and, and yourself uh, painting the pots is also an interesting concept so they're throwing several kind of separate things around so I guess if you and I hate to say it this way if you had somebody who is really into pottery uh, possibly somebody who is autistic and really into pottery uh, then this might be the game for somebody like that so that they could do it on a daily basis without making a mess. What is this 3D printer video though? I could imagine 3D printing a copy of your vase. Wow, what a concept. 3D printing being built into your VR game. Uh, a dumb idea, certainly, but uh, it, it's the kind of stupid fun dumb I've ever thought of. Uh, I like. Um, so yeah, apparently you could hook up your 3D printer 
$29 and and 99 cents is a high price and it's a VR game and it requires an account to a third party site to upload your pottery and then convert it into a VR game uh, English and Korean so this clearly is a Korean game and that that's what I like about Koreans in particular is that they they always seem like they have an idea that is something nobody else would think about in their art, whether they're making games or movies or TV. Um, I watch quite a few Korean uh, TVs, shows, and movies on on Netflix, in particular. Uh, but that there might be a filter bias there too. What a game! Um, this is going to stay on the fall list. But it's a VR game, so I'd only buy this if I did have a VR headset. I can't imagine if you had a 80-year-old grandmother that loved to do pottery, which I imagine that's most of the people that would want to do pottery. I don't imagine you would want to put a $400 VR headset on them and say, here you go, you can play, uh, make pottery in VR. Also, there is no tactical feedback on any of this. And probably not even any hand um, scanning so you would probably be controlling this with a controller in VR or with uh, VR uh, nunchucks so it, it still wouldn't feel anything like actual the actual tactical feeling of making things in, in the real world on the other hand it might be cheaper to do it in VR and not end up with a bunch of cheaply made uh, experimental pots that you've made and fired because you're not really gonna sell those for anything and not unless you be, are an expert uh, moving on yeah unless you're a well-known pottery artist I don't you're not gonna sell your pottery for anything next we have a game called Dollhouse. This is uh, a game I believe I just put on the uh, on the fall list. It's 55% positive. It came out May 24th in 2019. It's tag nudity, so I really shouldn't be watching the video. Uh, so we can look here at the reviews, but I, I really am just trying to give it six, six months to potentially fix itself. But you can see uh, Dollhouse has been hyped up and talked about. I've seen a lot of trailers that have tried to sell it like it's a, a really big deal. Uh, it's been announced since 2013, so it's it's been a very long time. and. Here you can see the reviews. Worst game in 2019. Repetitive and boring. Uh, let's see. A bit month, more than a month before its release date, there was an open beta on both PC and PS4, which seemed to come and go without many critics or fans saying much. So with all that surrounding enigma, what is it? The, and then this review just keeps on going. So skip down to the bottom. bottom. 1.5 out of 5, it's bad. Uh, let's see. Pros, interesting horror mechanisms, con, repetitive gameplay, wasted thematic potential game breaking bugs. Uh, maybe I shouldn't even keep this on the follow list. Uh, I think this is. Uh, this is probably an example of a game that is so bad even though it was majorly hyped that even if they started over from scratch and re-released the game I would probably hear about that so yeah Dollhouse needs to leave the fall list if they totally remake it and make it into something good I'll hear about that put it back on the fall list but at the current point it's past 20 reviews it came out only a few days ago and it's at 55 percent i can't imagine six months from now it's going to be any better reviewed even if they do patch things 
it, it needs more than just a patch it needs probably a full total remake and they probably knew that when they released it and that's probably why it has taken so long for it to come out hmm uh, next we have a game called don't notice me it's a narrative adventure game where you navigate high school politics to deceive authority figures pick locks break into rooms and solve murder mysteries typical teenager activities sounds fine to me this game kind of looks like the opposite of a game called Yandere simulator where you're playing as a, a character who's obsessed with a guy and is murdering all the other female uh, students that show any interest in that guy uh, that's basically what a yandere is in Japan is someone who has an obsessive murderous love or obsession maybe not even real love uh, of course this game actually came out in yandere simulator it's never coming out as far as I can tell seven dollars and 99 cents and it's 80 percent positive i probably wouldn't want to pay eight dollars but if it was four dollars this would be one of those weird unique short experiences um very short very linear very dumb is the only negative review very short game uh I'm fine with covering a short game as long as I know it's a short game. We have three negative reviews to 17 positive reviews. Yeah, from what I see, this is a very short game. No duh. And that's pretty much all I would want for this. Because frankly, these graphics aren't great. There, there's a way too bright color filter on this. Brightness is cranked up to 11. Um with no dark tones and no shading at all but yeah this this can go to the wish list uh, and seriously at this point I I am regretting not breaking up this video because it feels like this is just gonna keep on going and keep on going uh, next we have a game called don't play with the dolls or don't play with dolls it seems like it's an indie horror game it's 94% positive um, so is this a legitimate horror game or is this an asset flip horror game that's what I have to ans ask myself each time I look at a game like this um, it seems visually polished it seems like you're doing some things and interacting with objects instead of just wandering around. Um, it seems like this is just a game where the it's going to end the video with a jump scare. Hmm. Seems like this is the doll with glowing red eyes and then there's also some giant duck looking creature 99 cents is not asking a lot so maybe at that price that justifies a lack of quality we have one negative review well load no so now is a great point to point out there's here's a horror game that's that's probably a low effort horror game um, I would say hello neighbor and before it was actually finished was kind of a unfinished mess witch hunt is another low effort or asset flip game that I've seen dark wood is questionable as to whether it's a real game or a horror game slender the arrival probably relevant because of slender man uh, so that probably should be in my fall list also it's only two dollars for that game and seem it seems like the only negative review is not in English okay 
Collect items and keys, get out of the house while taking as much value as possible. Move quietly. They hear and see you. Do not play with dolls. So. So you're breaking into this house, robbing it. So it's a robbery simulator, uh, home break in simulator with a horror element. Hmm. I think most people who would break into a house and rob it would probably freak out and leave really quickly uh, if the, at the first indication that anything spooky was going on. Um, because people who are breaking in the houses and robbing them are doing crimes of opportunity with uh, the hope of very little conflict or interaction with the people in the house. If you wanted to interact with things and take bigger risks, you would rob the house when people are in it and and hold them at gunpoint and force them to show you where all the valuables are hidden. Uh, so what I think I need to resolve here though, even though it's cheap, even though it's rated positively, there is a large audience of people, mostly streamers, that play these games and like these games. I'm not really a streamer that wants to be like that, though. So, I don't see anything particularly special, even though it, it seems like it's a nicely polished and nicely laid out house. It probably doesn't change where anything is, so uh, or change the layout of the house, so you're probably would only play it a couple times. Uh, I think this one is a game that can easily be skipped, even though it is positively reviewed. It's just not my style of game. Uh, next, we have a game on Steam called Door Kickers Action Squad, which is a game where you kick in doors and then take out all the people in the room. In the next room and it's high high paced high action uh, style of game um, it's rated 90% positively 92% positively over its lifetime so people are liking it uh, and I think that's enough to put it on the wish list it's $13.99 I really wouldn't want to buy it at that price but uh i guess door kickers action squad is the sequel to a game just called door kickers and so i probably should have should get door kickers first um, so if i click on this image that hasn't loaded door kickers you see is 94 percent positive and came out in 2014 Hmm. It seems to me, as these images are taking their sweet time to load, that Door Kickers 1 is a completely different style of game for $19.99. Hmm. It's a top down game. Yeah. And from that perspective, I'm not a huge fan of top-down games but then it tells an interesting story that you would play the 2014 game uh, door kickers and then you're playing a different completely different style of game uh, for the sequel so yeah I kind of want both games Let's see how, how can we go back this way door kickers action squad I guess it's not a direct sequel and it's probably more of a spin-off style of game hmm I would say that the side scrolling shooting aspect here does seem like it's a lot more fun than the top-down perspective where the top-down perspective is probably more about strategy. Next we have a visual novel called Dora Kone, 
it's not tagged any near me or anything like this. Uh, let's see, is this actually a Japanese game or is this just drawn in Japanese anime style? Hmm. One thing that would indicate it probably isn't a Japanese game is the variety in characters, but that really doesn't say anything. It seems like there are three different three different characters with three different hairstyles. Hairstyles being different makes sense, but different skin tones, different heights, things like that typically isn't the case. This is, game is completely free with no in-app purchases. It's English only, has 13 endings, and it's uh, 31,000 words. So what we have here is kind of an introductory visual novel for people who would want to see if they could get into visual novels without committing to spending a lot of time on it. This visual novel was made uh, on Kickstarter. It was Kickstarter funded and then came out. Apparently it uh, it's the thing is an augmented reality game Well, that's the story is that people are playing an augmented reality game um, It's a short sweet free all ages girl on girl visual novel featuring uh, Cute girls. I assume friendship and romance. I assume GXG is girl on girl um Hmm. Well, your your point here, I guess, would be: Do I really need to play a free game that's a visual novel? No. Do I want to remove this from the follow list because it's a free game? No. Do I want to put it on the follow list uh, on the wish list because it's free and? It's received positive reviews no so because it's free and there is a small collection of free games on the uh, fall list I'm gonna to have to make a bigger decision than just what to do with this game uh, Dora Kone uh, I need to decide am I going to now start putting free games on the wish list and I think the answer is yes this would be a great game to fill in a spot and to introduce the idea of playing a visual novel without spending a lot of time on it. Also, I know it's family friendly somewhat, even though it's touching on lesbians, it's not tag nudity or, or sexual content. So I don't think that there would be too much to censor, even if there was an issue here to censor 12 CGs and cut ins and 13 endings means there probably isn't more than a couple dozen things that would need to be censored anyways so Dora Kone is going to the wish list that and I am just adapting a new policy free games that I want to actually play and I'm not just thinking about are going to the wish list maybe student projects are still staying on the follow list but frankly student projects should also go to the wish list next we have double kick heroes which is a rhythm game and fighting game this is uh, well as these videos are loading I think at this point, seeing how long I've gone, I am going to just say out loud that I probably am going to put in an abrupt ending into this and that way I could split this video in two. Hmm. I'm going to think about that. So at some point, this may be the game starting with the letter D part 2 video 
we probably would be into the second part of it instead of one incredibly long video uh, that is just going to cover everything that starts with D. Uh, getting back to this game, Double Kickers is kind of in this weird position. I have no rhythm, so playing a rhythm game is a really dumb idea for me. Most people that do have rhythm like this game, clearly. It's 81% positive of AD user reviews. And I think the game looks cool, but I don't think I could play it. It seems like it has a whole level editor where you can make your own levels and put in your own music. I'm also afraid to play any kind of music game because the music might be copyrighted. This game is also in early access still, and it's had its six months. So that is another good reason to just remove it from the fall list. Uh, I don't have a lot of faith that Double Kick Heroes is going to come out and be finished. The last update was from February. So that's getting removed. Next we have a game called Dr. Shaplot's Nanobots, which clearly is a mobile game. I don't know why I would have this on the fall list. I swear, sometimes I just accidentally click the button. Uh, I, I definitely do accidentally click the button. This is a mobile game that in no way should be something that's covered. It's not widescreen. It's four dollars for a mobile game which is way too much it has only four reviews uh, we really don't need to go any further with this uh, it's not making it next we have a game called dragons never cry which looks like a family friendly style of game and that would have interested me except for it falls out of relevancy because it has only four reviews and looking at the screenshots it seems like you're just walking around a very simplistic forest for the entire game from a top-down perspective which is not the perspective i would like to see when playing as a dragon four dollars and 99 cents seems like they might be working on a new game now uh, there's six positive and zero negative reviews. Hmm. I think this game is just too simplistic. And as much as I would want to play a child-friendly game, that doesn't mean I, I want to play a bad child-friendly game. So in comparison, you have something like Yoko Laylee, which is mostly positive, uh, which is on sale right now. 70% off and that's a pretty good deal you have cat's quest which is a pretty good game it's child friendly uh paw patrol on the rolls rated positively uh toki tori might be a game that's child friendly cat lateral damage there's a lot of other child friendly games to consider you don't have to costume quest 2 is a pretty good game costume quest 1 is a pretty good game for a child friendly style game yeah I don't think you need to to scrape the bottom of the barrel for something like this so again this leaves the fall list uh, next we have dragon scales 5 the frozen tomb what is this a match 3 style game it's, no it's a it's closer to a bubble bobble style game and yeah if i was going to play a bubble bobble style game i would just play bubble bobble uh, i don't know why this it's on the fall list it has only one user review it came out november 20th last year it's ten dollars another game that doesn't really even require consideration next we have dreams of dolly which is published by the salvador dolly museum uh, it's kind of, I think, a VR experience where you're walking around or being put on an experience where you're looking at 3D representations or recreations of some of Salvador Dali's images. 
uh, a lot of Salvador Dali is lesser known, so uh, I kind of know Salvador Dali. He's one of my favorite artists, uh, but I really don't recognize what's being shown to me uh, as one of his most prevalent things. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is a 10 minute experience where you just wear the VR and see what you see and there's not a lot to be shown. That being said, it's free, so there's no reason to remove this from the follow list. Um, we could see what the average playtime is. Half an hour, one hour, point one hour, point one hour. Uh, about five minutes of gameplay according to this review and yeah that's what I expect so yeah surrealism that's what Salvador Dali uh, was big into and basically created the surreal mo movement as it is so this just stays on the fall list though because I'd still need a VR headset uh, next we have DreamWorks Dragons Dawn of New Riders. This came out in 2019. It's mostly positive, 70% positive of 25 user reviews. This is a relatively recent uh, kids game. And unlike the previous Dragon game, it looks a lot better, even though it is also a top-down perspective. There's a lot more variety in what I'm looking at. And it's based on the... How to Train a Dragon, How to Kill a Dragon book series, uh, or How to Slay a Dragon. I don't know what the book series actual name is, but I know it's not How to Train a Dragon. They changed the name uh, for censorship reasons. Um, this should be on the fall list, uh, on the wish list though. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to to put this on the wish list. If I am going to cover kids' game, uh, the Dragons series is probably still going to be pretty good and pretty popular and even if this game was purchased five years from now it still probably would have enough relevancy to go back and and watch the many movies that have been made or the uh, or the read the books hmm. let's see you can finish the the game in six to seven hours that's not not terrible it's apparently there's only three missions hmm what was the price here thirty dollars I would have to get it on sale so I'm gonna have to, I wouldn't have to remember to not buy it at full price for three missions that can be done in six to seven hours that being said playing a kids game for more than six or seven hours is not even something I really am interested in doing so uh, a shorter experience works perfectly fine for me it just definitely does not work well for um, for kids who have a lot of time on their hands which maybe they do maybe they don't depending on how busy the kid is with doing other things so next we have this game called druid which is an adventure game where you figure out ways to cast spells uh, by finding things and then you cast the spells on yourself and and activate puzzles this feels a lot like a point-and-click adventure game called loom where you had to learn songs and play them on a musical instrument to cast spells it seems pretty simplistic though in the graphics department it's 79% positive. It's $1.99. At that price, it can be pretty simplistic. It's bundled with some other things, like a game called Lanternum. Um, Lanternium. Let's see. Hmm. Very short adventure, you find runes that let you control elements and you shapeshift into animals. It's not as interesting as it sounds though, as there's barely any interaction at all. 
It's just a matter of using X to get past Y and then repeat. The game is sluggish, your character moves slowly, and using runes can take a considerable amount of time. Rune casting gets progressively worse as you eventually gather a bunch of shape-shifting runes. Uh, they have lengthy animations. Hmm. It's focused on backtracking and remembering what you can interact with and where that is. Not my cup of tea. Hmm. I was gonna put this on the wish list, but after seeing the negative reviews, I suspect I would find it more frustrating than fun. It's a concept that just probably needs more polish. Yeah. So this is going to get removed from the fall list. Uh, also, it's from 2017 and it has only 48 reviews. So if you split that for the two years plus that it's been out, uh, it's barely under 20, uh, barely over 20 reviews per year which hasn't really been a metric that I've been using, but it does indicate people lost interest in it. Next, we have a game called Druid Stone, The Secret of the Minhir Forest, tactical turn-based RPG from the makers of The Legend of Grimrock. This is 84% positive, came out May 15th, 2019. I think Mob Rule here says that this game should just be in the wish list. It is a tactical based RPG, turn based RPG style of game, but there's a lot of polish here. It looks a lot better than some of the other games I've seen of this same style of gameplay. Uh, looks like there's a lot more variety in level design and just design in general. Hmm. So visually, this looks good. $24.99, maybe not that good. Um, and I see one negative review, two negative reviews, uh, three negative reviews. But then I see a lot of positive reviews too. So I'm not willing to really believe it. When you have 189 positive and 33 negative, uh, mob rule again tells me this one deserves the wish list. Hmm. We are going through a lot more games than we have with the previous letters, and that means that there have been a lot more games that have been added to the wish list. Uh, but I think we might be close to the end. I keep promising that, but who knows. Next, we have a game called Desync, just D S Y N K. It's a retro wireframe shooter game. What this really is, is uh, there is a game that was made called, what is it? Well, the sequel is called Child of Light. The original game was called what? Hmm. Res. Yeah. The, the, the game was REZ was the name of it. There was a remaster of it called Res Infinite that came out on consoles or more modern consoles. And then the sequel is called Child of Light. It was very musical. It had a lock on shooter and it had this wild wireframe animation. So this is a Res clone on Steam because I do not believe, I guess we might even search this REZ. Uh, Res Infinite actually is on Steam. Hmm. I'm just gonna open that in a new tab then uh, because I don't believe I own that game. Uh, well, now knowing that Res Infinite, the remaster of Res, is on Steam, having a clone of that game really has no justification to be on the follow list. Nobody has reviewed this game. Nobody has bought it it's too expensive um it it might be a hidden gem as a clone but yeah i, I can't really take that risk 
and the recommendations here as far as other games aren't recommending anything different so desync is leaving the fall list whereas res infinite which is a legendary masterpiece uh, here you can see it's the basically the same game but done the right way you're flying around you're locking on enemies and you're shooting them with your gun and all the while music is playing and there's a whole new level that an optional VR support uh, realizing that this uh, that this has VR support this is the number one game that I could recommend to be played on VR this is 91% positive res infinite uh, of course we're supposed to be looking at games starting with the letter D not games that are starting with the letter uh, R I don't know what the digital deluxe DLC is it's probably just artwork and all of these reviews are real by the way these are, this isn't just somebody who is making up reviews uh, this is a slightly lesser known game it came out a long time ago but for people who have played it they love it and don't let the wireframe art style uh, confuse you it is using that as an artistic touch not because the game is uh, is just poorly animated or that they couldn't have animated it better although maybe when it originally came out they couldn't have animated it any better but now they certainly could have uh, but the sequel child of light came out many many years after the original game and it still had a wireframe art style to it next we have a game here called duke dashington remastered this seems to me to be like a wario land clone uh, nintendo games in particular are never going to come to steam at least not in any foreseeable future so a game where you're playing a character that dashes like wario and seems to be running around looking for treasure like wario would do in wario land one two or three uh, this seems like a fine game it's widescreen uh, maybe there's no enemies in the actual game and you're just fighting uh, flames and spike balls but this doesn't look terrible four dollars and 99 cents has six user reviews let's see what they are positive 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 uh, are there any negatives no eight user reviews in total all positive let's see five different dungeons 150 rooms it's not going to be an incredibly long game uh, the original game came out in 2014 this is a remastered version of it to make it look a little bit better i don't think you could remaster this kind of game over again uh, i kind of wish that there were more duke dashington games uh, let's see if there actually are uh, here you have a game called the dangerous dungeons which is clearly a game boy inspired game and i'm fine playing a game boy inspired game but i don't want to look at something that looks like a game boy game with four shades of grayscale or four shades of green so just put some color in it please so this came out in 2018 this came out uh just a few days ago as of recording um so they had made a game called super dangerous dungeons and this is positive with 30 reviews this has only six reviews and is 100 percent positive and then tiny dangerous dungeons is like the game boy clean uh, copy of it and i wouldn't be surprised if it's pretty much the same game so i'm not super interested in playing either one of these games but duke dashington remastered definitely is making it to the wish list uh, I would love to see more Nintendo game clones and frankly more WarioWare style games in general 
think that's a pretty great idea. Next we have a game called Dusk Diver, which might be a Chinese game. Let's see, 90% positive of 101 user reviews over the lifetime, only 78% positive in the last 30 days. I believe this is something kind of like a Persona game where you're doing some conversation and some talking but also a large amount of the game is done via going into a different world and playing an RPG style game uh, which is pretty much exactly what Persona is um, yeah this is a lot of RPG elements being shown Although maybe there is in a different world and maybe you just do all the fighting in the real world. That might be the case too. Yeah, it seems like it's a real-time action hack and slash style of fighting instead of like turn-based fighting. And it looks very anime and it looks very cool. Seems like the characters themselves turn into... Uh, fighting avatars of themselves instead of summoning any kind of monsters. Hmm. So that's kind of all I need to see. The only thing that is stopping this from going to the wish list is the fact that it's still an early access. And I guess it did just come out, so it needs a little bit more time to finish itself and come out of early access I guess I guess that's what this uh, resolves it to in all fairness if this wasn't in early access and this had come out and I had seen it originally I would have probably just put it on the wish list in the first place this is a high level of polish a high level of animation uh, that being said being a JRPG style game, Dusk Diver may fall down to being a game that would be at the bottom of the list just because it's not Final Fantasy or some other JRPG that is much well, which much more known. So this one though just stays on the wish list, and finally. Finally, we are two games that start with the letter E. So, four hours in, I think I won't split this up because it would just be a lot of work to find a spot to split it up at about the two hour mark. And then what will almost certainly happen is we will start covering the games that start with the letter T. And then that will probably be close to a six to eight hour a video that I will split up and so I'll then end up with far too many episodes for the, as many episodes as I'd like to release in a certain month uh, so this is just going to be an incredibly long uh, video and I wouldn't be surprised if we run into several other letters that are incredibly long but I don't realize that they were going to take that long so I don't split it up T in particular I will split up right when we hit games that start T-H-E because there's gonna be a lot of games that are the something uh, that's gonna be it for this recording though as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos because that helps me with YouTube when you subscribe please click that notification bell so you can get notifications you can also friend or follow me on social media sites. A bunch of links are down below in the description. That way you can get backup notifications when YouTube inevitably fails to give you notifications. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list. That's why I'm doing all of this uh, curation. Uh, also, if you don't want to pick a game off my wish list, you can just gift me a gift card or gift me any game you want to see me cover whether I've wishlisted it or not. If I'm gifted a game, I'm going to feel very, very much obliged to cover it. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.